without further ado, we have on <clears throat> Chad M. Brooks, AI artist, LARPer maybe? I don't know. We'll talk about that too when he comes on. But Chad, welcome to the show. It's good How to are be you, here, mate. Yeah, I'm going great. Yourself? I'm doing pretty good, man. Like I said before, it's uh, Thanksgiving Eve over here in the States. I'm uh, looking forward to good food and family and friends and football tomorrow. Lots of things to be excited about. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for this conversation, even by your intro. Um, and also, by the way, the the, um, the actual intro clips that you did, that that Yoda stick one, is that a regular or, or is that something new that you've uh, added on? The Yoda one? Oh, Yoda the, st the my stick? Yeah, because I because I happen to be a fan of sticks. I'm not sure yeah. if you know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Sticks. That that no, that's one of my anthem songs. Yeah, no that that is a, that is a, a regular one I have on this channel. It's uh, I grab a lot of stuff from the bad lip syncing uh, guys mm -hmm. and make all those all the fun videos, and they do a lot of Star Wars stuff. And uh, I can't help myself. Like they they make some really really good good videos. We got Corey Barton in the house. Hail Corey, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Um, so Shad, before we get started. Why don't you tell everybody who you are and what it is that you represent here in, in this conversation before I jump into some kind of conversations, questions of my own when it comes to the back and forth that we might have had or a lot of people have had lately on Twitter, Twitter X, since you kind of started pushing the AI stuff specifically on that platform. I'm going to give you the floor for a little bit. Just introduce who you are and let everybody know uh, what you're all about. Yeah. I mean, well, it's funny. Like. The whole AI art advocacy kind of thing that I'm doing, it seems to have come out of left field, even a bit to myself. Um, it's uh, it's never been part of my initial kind of brand or or persona or even interest. But I mean, it's a new technology anyway. So, of course, it wasn't even mm. on the radar, you know, when I started making content. Uh, and so my well, more prominent kind of things I'm known for is uh, Shadowversity. And so that's, um, you know, talking about, swords mainly and how it intersects with pop culture and uh, testing you know things out in real life and all that um but what's interesting is that even even like shadowversity and youtube that came about almost as a secondary passion of mine my my primary passion has always been story creation and uh, even from a, a young kid i would be creating stories and uh, the way that i express those would be i would draw them um and uh, what was interesting, like the uh, the process of creation, I always gained deep satisfaction on. But what I didn't fully realize uh, growing up is that it, I it wasn't the mechanical movement that I was enjoying. It was actually the creation of something. And when I started to get commissions where people were asking me to draw stuff that I wasn't really interested or invested in, I, I, I wasn't enjoyable at all. I found it really, really boring. But what was interesting about that, like I, I had trouble with English growing up and I almost okay. got kept down in grade six because I was so bad at English. And that actually created kind of like a negativity in my younger self towards reading and books. And it was uh, it was basically because I was constantly getting, you know, um, corrected by my teachers and it felt like criticism and stuff for how bad I, I was at, you know, spelling initially and things. And I had a bit of an awakening moment when I was older, where I uh, started uh, writing down th things that I was passionate about. So, funnily enough, it was in scripture study that I started writing out kind of um, uh, concepts about, you know, because I was a missionary at the time. And, and I ended up writing these theses. And I was like, holy crap, that was really fun. I thought I didn't like reading, writing books and all that stuff. But the, here I am writing these things. And I realized the actual mediums i'm working in wasn't really the thing that was uh, um uh, attracting me to towards doing it it was what i was making with those mediums it was the process of creation and that unlocked just an entire world of um creativity for me with writing and i started pursuing writing massively and so much so that it became a passion that i wanted to achieve that as my lifelong dream to be to be an author and what was interesting is uh, there was another expression of that kind of creation side of me that I love to create stories. And I had thought that I wanted to be a comic book artist growing up because I thought like drawing is my main passion when it was actually the stories that I was making and drawing was just the act of expression, expressing uh, those things. Okay. And so I wanted to be an author before I became a YouTuber. And I, and partly I started YouTube as a platform to launch my writing career off of. And uh, 
writing was just another medium where even younger, I was thinking I'd love to make, you know, uh, cartoons, animations, film. It was always about story creation. And so the reason why this is links to the AI art. Okay. So AI <laughs> I was wondering where, but yeah, good. The AI art comes around and I discover another medium that enables me to express the vision, the, uh, the artistic kind of, you know, vision I have also the stories that I'm creating. And it also enables me to express and depict them in some really awesome ways. And that just excites me tremendously because it, and it's not to say to, you know, overtake other mediums that I've enjoyed expressing my stories through my writing, my drawing, everything. In actual fact, I'm combining them um, and, and they play off of each other in such a dynamic way that it even draws me in further because then I start to really enjoy the challenge and the process itself because I have a, all right, I have an idea for a new image. That's a depiction of a story I have. This is going to be challenging. And then I start to really enjoy trying to overcome that challenge because the end product, you know, if I'm able to achieve it becomes really satisfying and I'm having tremendous artistic satisfaction with the end product because it's taking so much intent and, and uh, my own, I, I guess, hand in the uh, the process of creation. And that's some of the things that people have really tried to say doesn't exist with AI art. Mm. And so this is where it's married some of my other kind of um, um, tendencies. I hate misinformation. One of the reasons I started Shadowversity was to correct misinformation about things that I'm passionate about. Swords, okay. medieval stuff, and everything like that. And there is so much misinformation about AI art. And it's something that I, I'm seeing tremendous benefit from and so much potential, so much potential to benefit so many people uh, that that's where I started to push back. It's like, all right, mm. like you, you, I'm not saying you have to like it, but mm. let's understand it correctly. Uh, can we start there? And so I've been trying to correct misinformation about the technology and uh, spread, I guess, a better understanding and everything. And then also compare interesting parallels that i see because i like like i said you can hate ai art i'm not trying to change that mind but i do think we should be consistent in our standards consistent in our standards about what takes effort consistent in our standards about what is art can and when i and because there are many things that people consider art and it's like okay that that's a very close parallel to what many people are doing with ai art mm. and there are are many things that people consider to be art uh, and there are multiple other kind of standards that kind of just come to my mind it's like all right well let's compare and contrast but anyway that's kind of the background uh for me right now. well let's <clears throat> let's dive into some of that here in a second guys i see you in the chat there's a lot of people in the chat the chat's going crazy <laughs> some funny comments in there uh if you have any legitimate questions i'll try to get them on on the screen um if you send a super chat they will definitely get on the screen i don't care if it's 99 cents don't that doesn't matter but at least it'll allow me to be able to you know set it aside so we can actually uh get some uh questions out so here's my thing shed when i first heard of you it was because of twitter posts and it was because of an ai post that you put i think it was the supergirl thing that you put out mm -hmm. that you had done and when I originally read the post, I took it as a very kind of uh, condescending towards the art community, just kind of the way you presented it, almost, almost like saying we, we artists. Now, you know, I consider myself a, a real artist. No offense, but just a real artist that draws with my hands from beginning to end. You know, I, could, could so I ask what what your standard then is for being a real artist? Is it like someone doing something physically with their hands? So my whole thing specifically within the conversation of the AI versus whatever is in the form of looking at it through the lens of comic book art. So I've gotten in conversations with people on, on Twitter in, in your comment feeds about uh, other stuff related to AI art. And I just want to limit it to comic book stuff because we can all agree that Art is subjective. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. that are considered art. I could take a shit on a napkin, take a picture of it, put it online. Somebody's going to think <laughs> it's art and buy it for fifty thousand dollars. Which know? is amazing, I, I, and almost depressing. Like, but but yeah, I mean, I wish I could become see, rich like that. I definitely do it. You know, and I'm I'm a hundred percent with you on that regard, right? Because there are art forms that I do not 
really respect. I don't think it takes a lot of effort and everything. And, and so I can kind of sympathize with a lot of ways people look at AI art, right? Mm. Um, but sometimes I, I do feel that their opinions that they draw from AI art are, uh, they reach those opinions from a misunderstanding of the technology. Uh, like the uh, um, concept that it's all lazy. That's an interesting one. I'm sure we'll talk about because I, I find that, 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 that That's what I was going to say. Like, yeah, I thought but, but just before we get so lazy. Yeah, I throw around yeah, yeah. the word lazy a lot when it comes to that, just because of the way I view it. Uh, mm -hmm. But <clears throat> all right, real quick. So we got. So this is what I'll do, guys. If you do a super chat, I'll try to get it up as long as it's not breaking the flow of the actual conversation. Mm -hmm. But since we're on a break, yeah, two dollars from John says AI doesn't make up an artist editor for sure. Artists know. Um, Can I jump on that? Because yeah, absolutely. Again, I was going to bring a point to that. When, but go ahead and talk to it. Talk about when it. people say that, right? Uh, like from the back and forth and discussion, I'm starting to realize that they're being very kind of specific on what they're defining as an artist, but they're not explaining that in, in comments like this. Okay. Because when they say artist, I think they might be referring to something like what you're saying is like a comic book artist, an artist that draws with their hands and stuff mm. where the term artist, as you say, is actually such a subjective and broad term. And so are they being specific to a type of artist? Because if we wanted to get into specifics, are AI artists comic book artists? No, uh, I get a completely different medium. Okay. But are AI artists artists? Well, hang on. To be an artist, right? If we were to be just as honest as we can to the most basic definition of an artist, an artist is someone who makes art. That, 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 that's the most basic, fundamental, objective definition I think we could reach. So then to determine if someone's really an artist, you have to determine, are they making actual art? Then we come into another really like complex. I don't actually think it's complex, actually. It, can get, it gets muddy. It's, by it's not really complex. Definition. I agree with you on the fact that that's why I said I wanted to limit the conversation. And all I've ever done when I talk to people online is try to limit the conversation to comic book art, because that's what I push back on. Um, I've talked to people in your comment th threads with people, you know, comparing uh, AI to Photoshop or uh, to photography and, and all this stuff. And I'm like, look, none of that shit matters to me. Like, I really could care less. I'm talking about in in the form of comic book art, in the medium of, of drawing comics, because I've gone back and forth with people be before you about this whole subject with people that are making comic books with AI generated art. And that's the thing that I. I really have a strong opinion and push back on. I don't like it because I think it disrespects the medium of comic books when it comes to the art form that's been developed over, you know, 60, 70 I'm, years. I'm interested in why you think it's disrespecting an art form, but, but before we just to finish off the kind yeah, of cool. idea about, you know, cause I understand that you're trying to focus in on, on comic book art and that is a, you know, we'll have a good conversation about that. Um, I don't want people to misunderstand then that I'm not don't trying it. to say AI artists are equivalent to comic book artists, to digital artists and everything. I'm saying AI artists are artists in a new medium, AI art. Uh, and and that's kind of been my standard. And in terms of what you define an artist, yeah, someone who makes art. What is art? Art is anything that people believe is art. You might not think it's good art. You might not like it. But if someone legitimately thinks something is art, I can't. I can't force my standard on them. I can't. No, you, how dare you to say that? It's If it's art to them, even modern art, which <clears> I, I largely hate, even though look, there's some good modern art, some, but uh, there's some really lazy bad stuff. I can't rob that of them. And therefore, if it, like, even though I don't like it, I have to be honest and say it is a type of art because art is, if someone believes in art, even one person, it's a type of art to them. Um, we, you don't we have to we... like it. Yeah, and you don't have to think of it yourself, but if you just, the objective standard of, what is art? It's whatever someone thinks is art. Okay, I would say so we, can we can agree. We can agree yeah, on art form in general, kind of like what I brought up earlier. You know, art can be anything. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> there's some <laughs> weird stuff out there. <laughs> yes. uh, but specifically on the examples, so I can only go on the examples that you have given in your in your threads and in your videos. And it's specifically kind of like a comic book fantasy kind of style mm -hmm. of art. And so that's that's my biggest issue and, and when it boils down to it i believe that even watching your videos which i have you know and i i, I try to watch yeah, the, everyone you post as much as i can mm -hmm. just to see kind of where you're coming from because i i want to have an actually open dialogue and understand it and not just come at you with a bunch of bs but i i don't understand <clears throat> how using prompts to generate an image and maybe this is where you can kind of go in and explain yourself a little bit more than you do on, mm -hmm. on Twitter, but using prompts to generate an image that pulls from uh, already existing images or whatever you've shown in your videos, you, you can have 
you know, like some of the anime stuff or whatever it is that looks like you pull from and it, you know, that Supergirl thing. I, I would I would suggest everybody, if you haven't yet, go back and watch Shad's video on, on Supergirl because you get to see your entire process, which I did mm-hmm. appreciate. You you go through step by step your entire process and you get to see it. But that just kind of re reinforced my thought on it. Like you put a prompt in and the very the first image that pops up is a AI generated image of Supergirl. And then you go in and do a bunch of edits and photoshops and mess stuff around, put it back into the AI generator, regenerate it and keep working on it like that back and forth until you get the picture you want. And then you use your wife's face, you know, to Mm -hmm. finish it out, you know, which by the way, I have no problem with, you know, shout out to your wife and you're creating art for her. That's, you know, awesome. You know, I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with though, is coming out and trying to establish it. Like that is your art. Now, no offense Mm -hmm. to me, that is AI's art. And you basically assisted the art, the creating of that art, you know? Mm -hmm. So my issue is that trying to push a technology like that to anybody creating one art that I don't think you can sell or art that well, you can actually create a comic book with. And you know, we can get yeah, in that in a second. Yeah, that, that's I've to actually me, got that a, is a lazy video process. On that one. To me, that's okay, sorry. to me, that's like the that, lazy process. You know, you're basically letting something do, let's say 80% of the work, right? You do 20% of the work and then you take credit for it. I think that's what I'm kind of pushing back on. And I see people do that. You actually do a little bit more because you do editing. Granted, I'll mm-hmm. give you that, but people have gotten arguments before, just have stuff generated, then throw it out into a comic book page and then try to pass it off as a comic book. And there's so much more to a comic book when it comes to storytelling, sequential story, you know, telling the art, the stuff that you have to learn and study to become good at. And it's almost like people are trying to skip that process to get from A to B really quick without any understanding of what they're doing. And I see you, and I'm not putting you specifically in that position, Shad, mm-hmm. but I see you because you've come out you've been a big advocate for it mm-hmm. you've created videos and i get to see your process and i still have not seen anything that changes my mind even watching your videos so how do you reconcile when the fact that i come and say that this still isn't your art because somebody else mm-hmm. the computer is creating 80 percent of it mm-hmm. so i've addressed that with my pendulum art example did you get to see that little clip i did and i mm-hmm. i didn't i really didn't accept that answer to be honest with you um because well, just I, to explain I saw it, the video yeah go yeah. ahead and explain yeah, explain it if people didn't see it go ahead there are a lot of art forms that use automatic processes that run on its own <clears throat> and all the person did was initiate it and pendulum art is a primary example but uh you know, i like the most direct example is probably photography where you press a button and there's an automatic machine or a machine that runs through an automatic process that captures or creates that art, right? But because it's a machine, it doesn't have a soul, right? The person who initiated that work's creation is credited as the creator in pendulum art and in photography. And I don't think necessarily all, you know, everything that people take with a camera, right, is art. I think that it requires artistic intent for it to become art. Okay. That's the same. That's my same view with AI art. If someone has artistic intent with what they're trying to create, okay, because there's no other person in the process, they are the causer, the, the initiator of this work's creation. That's why they're the creator. Even though they're using a very advanced tool that you can say is doing most of the work, that's the same with photography. <laughs> now, I'm not saying, like, I'm not trying to downplay some of the complexity and work that's required in making some of the gr- greatest forms of photographic art. Okay. But exactly what I said there, I feel, applies to the best AI art as well. And I don't think people are acknowledging how much work and intent is actually needed. Uh, far more than just a prompt, right, to make some of the best AI art to the point where there, it has such intent and additional work that a person is putting into it that, oh, absolutely, I see it as uh, tremendously, not only art, but because they are so responsible, the person is so responsible for how this final product is looking and working, I absolutely see them as the creator. Not in the same way that if someone did it all by hand. I'm not trying to say it's equivalent. I'm trying Mm. to say it is a legitimate form of artwork in its own medium and that the person who is the cause of its creation can take ownership over it and feel that they are, they created it. Okay. I have 
I have a point to make on there, or just a question to ask. Uh, but before I do, five dollars from from John says, if I take your stories and shift paragraphs around and claim it's my own, my own, am I a writer, editor, or a uh, plagiarist? Um, I think that's kind of the way. Do you want me to answer of, that one? Yeah, go ahead and answer that. But I was going to say, I think that's the way a lot of people think. Um, yeah, well, it depends. Just like I, how I said, I don't think everyone necessarily who puts in a prompt in an AI art, same with someone taking a, a picture with a camera, is an artist. It depends how much they are actually adding into it. Um, there is this really interesting uh, AI art application, which does real-time AI rendering of digital painting. And as you paint, the AI takes that and digitally renders it into a final result. And it is fascinating, fascinating stuff where someone is actually doing like a lot of manual kind of digital painting to begin with. And so what I, I point that out to show that there's a spectrum in how AI art is used. And people always try and render it down to the most simplistic kind of form of it, just write in a prompt. When there is so much more that can be involved in this process that actually I feel legitimates, legitimates more complex AI works as art, as, you know, the person doing it as the creator, but then people want to often ignore that and say, you just did it in a prompt and render it down to analogies like the super chat was just given. You're just rearranging uh, paragraphs and stuff. And I think that that's them trying to make a, an analogy that they think AI art just takes images and rearranges it. And that is not how the technology works at all. It's not a collage machine. Um, and, uh, and, uh, People who kind of try and, you know, paint it that way just really misunderstand the technology flatly, uh, like in the way that it works. Um, I think, I, I think, sorry, you, <clears throat> no, no, you're fine. Um, one of my main questions I have with, with doing that. So just straight up, you know, I'm an artist. I've spent years, you know, perfecting my craft, studying, learning hours and hours of uh, practice and study and all that kind of stuff to get to where I am as, as who I am as an artist. And I have a, I have an ego about it, right? I enjoy the ego of what it takes to create something from nothing to the final product. When I show it off, I show off where, whether it's a fully penciled piece or fully inked piece, but something I did all by myself, I put it out, I show it off. I have an ego to be like, that was me. I did that. Can you really take pride in something that, a computer basically did the majority of the work and you just basically edited it to a point where you can say i did these things to make it better but the majority of the work was in that supergirl if you guys have not seen that video you you put it right out there you prompted all the prompts with your programs mm -hmm. and it created that image it created that image for you and you just you you tweaked mm -hmm. it granted you did work i get you yeah. you put work into it you put hours into it, all that kind of stuff. But is that something you can still take pride in and say, like, that was me? You know, like, I did that, you know, where, where I can yeah. do that. I can put my art out there and be like, that was me. Like, look at mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You know, I, think, I have an ego. Praise me. That's my art. I, you know? All right. Well, I'm not trying to get that when I put my art out there. Like, to answer your question, yes, but not in the same way. When I put my art out there, that's not me saying that I constructed the whole thing by hand and everything. And I absolutely believe if someone made that same image, but by hand, that's more impressive. Absolutely. Mm. And I would be more impressed and give more credit to the artist in the sense, in the credit that you're trying to say that, you know, that the artist deserves for having done by hand. The thing is, though, is that that final image, like the Supergirl image, mm. is basically impossible for the AI to spit out. OK, in the way that I want it uh, with just a prompt, you could be you could try and tweak that prompt forever. And you basically would never get that specific result that I was after because it takes that manual input to get it there. I and it's that, that manual input sure. process that gives me more satisfaction. But also one of the other things, even even down to prompting, trying to refine a prompt to get a result closer or even exact to the way that you want is an artistic process in my belief because it takes effort and time to really try and define what it is in the same way that writing a good scene in a book you can take credit for having depicted that scene in such a way that makes people's imagination see what you want them to see in in the writing process 
like it's this you're you're facing the same challenges when you're really trying to prompt a very specific difficult image and especially when you have to start to work and basically when you're after a specific result you always have to work with the settings in a in a in a lot of complex ways um to get a result that you want this is different to someone who is like i don't really have a specific art thing that i'm after i'm going to do in a prompt and i'm just uh, ai show me what you can do you and they kind of give more of the creative process to the ai where it is more of that slot machine random result and they're just after something interesting for the ai to spit out for them okay. right in those instances i like even if i when i do that i don't take as much ownership over those specific results um in actual fact i've got some images that i can show you um in contrast sure. yeah. go um go and pop those up um, yeah, real quick, quick while you're doing that, we got John for twenty dollars. Damn, dude, appreciate you. You're gonna fund my daughter's college here in a second. It says, where do you think program uh, converting the digital painting in real time learned patterns from? Uh, did photographers get credit? Did landscape artists? Did any other source that trained it with or with get credit for the source's images? And I, that's another like we'll jump into that topic. Well, yeah, we'll, as well, far let's as the copyright that because that's stuff. another yeah, that's I'm, another topic that I'd honestly I'd love to talk about. You know, in full. Um, yeah, we'll definitely get back to that. Thank you, John. So let me share with you this. I'm gonna uh, did a specific window. Share this one right here. Okay. All right. So see this image. This is hmm. ba this is straight text to image without any edits at all. Now, what I was doing here is that I have a specific image in my mind okay. that I know the AI will never be able to uh, get exact. I have a specific pose, uh, and uh, in an actual fact, it's going to be a mix between medieval and science fiction combined. I have a design for the sword that I want him to hold. The AI is never going to get that. No matter how much I prompt, it's never going to get that. What I was trying to do here is refine a prompt that gets the kind of look I'm after, get close enough. And this was the first stage in a process where I'm just trying to figure out what prompt is going to do the job for me. Okay. And so I start generating these images. I don't take a lot of ownership over these images. Like, well, when I say, like, I think push come to shove, I could claim copyright ownership over them because I'm the one causing its creation. But mm. in an artistic sense, I don't take artistic kind of credit for, you know, having a lot of input in these images apart from the prompt. Although I am refining the prompt, okay, um, okay. it's uh, on a completely different level. So I want you to look at uh, those, Im see these images there. I'm going to bring up uh, another image, which is uh, what I'm going to be showing is a before and after. Th these images were the beginning of a process. And then I'm going to show you the final image at the end of this process. And then perhaps I'll show you all the work that it took in between <laughs> to get there. Okay. Because there is, I feel something quite interesting in this comparison because the final image will show you what I'm actually after as a, as the final result, basically. Um, and so this final image, um, which I will, I'll need to stop sharing this one and then reshare. While you're bringing one. that up question, when you're making this art, what is your purpose of making the art? For this one, this for is anything, actually for anything that you do with AI. Oh, what, what's what's the purpose? Your usually it's depicting characters. Behind. Yeah, usually it's depicting characters for stories that I'm planning to create and write. Um, or just sometimes it's making just make something cool, like with my um supergirl image of my wife. But this one here is actually the main character for a graphic novel that I want to develop in the future. And so, so uh this was the final, this is okay, the image I had in my head, and okay. that's the final result. And uh, this image. Holy crap, took a lot of work to get there. The AI is never able to, would never be able to produce this image on its own. And it took so much additional work from as I drew out the starting pose. And uh, I, it took such, uh, you know, I designed that sword as a 3D model from scratch and everything. I like, there is so much required on my end to reach this result that I have. You know that type of artistic satisfaction that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. I have that in this image. Not to the level that I mm. think I drew every single bit by hand, but it took such a process to get there, which I, I'd like to, you know, because I have all the stages I can show you the, that process, right? That, yeah, I, 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 
I'm actually expressing a legitimate, true emotional um, uh, result, feeling I have at the result. I look at this and I get a sense of pride and satisfaction. I get true artistic satisfaction when I look at this image because I I created it. And I am absolutely happy to claim that. And I use our AI tools to get there because this image it, you'd never be able to make it with a prompt, not not to this specific level. So here's the thing. So <clears throat> let's say that you can make these pretty images with the editing, with the prompt, you know, all that kind of stuff. I see people in the chat, and this is kind of something that we we all kind of think about. So with the AI generator, it had to generate an image that was very similar to this before you you all you mess with it and made it you know more your own. But I see people in the chat saying this looks like uh, Guts from Berserker. And there was another person said it looked like Final Fantasy Mash with Berserker. How do you get around the fact that the AI could pull from those um, uh, images or those influences to make something? And now you have a mashup of something that somebody else put the creative time and effort into creating. And now that the AI just pulled it in and produced it and you you know, you edit it Sorry. and now you're calling it you're calling it yours it's your character you know, how do you reconcile I, that when people point that out to you well for one i know that they're wrong because i drew out the initial pose and design of this character by hand myself it wasn't the ai and i find it really interesting that people want to automatically try and pass off the creative composition design of this image to ai because i use ai tools when they haven't even realized that the composition design is all 100% me. Same with that sword. I, like I designed that sword from zero to the actual design in, in SketchUp. It's a 3D model I made myself, right? Now, to, for, to get the AI to draw from artistic sources, you usually need a prompt. If, you actually, if I actually wanted this to be, draw from Berserk, I would have needed to have prompted it intentionally for it to draw from Berserk. In the same way that an artist, you know, when you draw something by hand, taking inspiration from another anime or style, whatever, you can choose to do that manually. You can choose to do that with AI art tools as well. And so to show you the beginning process, right? Yeah. I'll stop yeah, sharing this. The, the very, very beginning. I do, guys, I see your super chats coming in. We, I'll definitely get to them here in a second when we get a break from this, this, per, this specific uh, thing that Shad is showing. And I'll jump into uh, some of the super chats that came in dealing with this topic. All right, so I've shared a new image. So that's the initial sketch drawing that I did by hand. <clears throat> now, you'll notice there's a lot of elements missing. This one was just to get the pose. This was for pose. I okay. scanned it, brought it into Photoshop, and then I added that. And you might already be starting to see uh, the design and composition of the image pretty clearly there. Now, that is, this image here is the thing that I put in to the AI generator. I'm going to stop sharing this one because the process to get from that stage to the next stage, and this isn't, we're not even at the finished stage yet. You're going to show was, the very next stage. Well, the very, very yeah, next the ne stage. The very next stage. Well, I'll share this one, right? Okay. So from this image, right? Yes. This is straight, so I'm doing image to image using control net and a, and a number of control net um, applications. And so uh, just trying to do image to image with a prompt, you, you'll, it'll, it'll totally warp, mutate, and it will not look anything like the original one. And so I'm using a lot of tools that you need to learn how to use to take this image <clears throat> and then process it. And so uh, that was, uh, am I on the right image? No, 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 hang on. Are you yeah, seeing it change? It I did not see it change. Okay, okay, so now okay, you see the change. All right. All right. So there from there to there. So this is what the AI can do just with one process without any additional editing or work. All right. And so I took that image and got that. What did it do? It made the colors on the um, surcoat wrong. Look at that hand. That hand is mutated beyond belief. Okay. Um, that's got toes on the feet. All right. I like this image is a piece of crap. But to say that there is nothing good in it, I think would be disingenuous. Like look <clears> at the <throat> look at the way that it's done the tone on the muscles. And okay, well here's here's my face. here's my issue uh, with this shed. Mm -hmm. The so you, go back to the go back to the image you just had. 
Yep, yep, yep. Let me just bring this up. There. Okay, so this is your original. This is your original drawing. So you hand drew this. Mm -hmm. You know, you, yep. you colored it in Photoshop or whatever it is that you use. Um. So <clears throat> this is your art style, whether it's loose or not. You know, I don't know. I've never seen a. No, it's actual, not like yeah. This is I've never actually seen a finished finished piece by you. But just my point is, mm -hmm. you you're taking this very very loose Rough, gesture yeah. or whatever. And then the very next picture is the AI assist. So the AI took everything. Yes, your pose is there. Okay, it's a similar pose, but nothing resembles anything you just did with the AI prompts. Nothing? Nothing does. Nothing? Like, because just to the me, pose, I'm... just the pose that the you pose. drew. That's it. But everything else, now you got this, this mapped on, painted detailed muscles and all the stuff yeah there are errors in there for sure that you're you're yeah you, know, big errors. you, you fix well no no but this was nothing a... that resembles one from the other all right so i think nothing is way too far of, of a, a leap because to me one of the most important elements is actually kept which is the the tone of the image the expression which is held in the pose and the angle of the face and everything. And that's one of the more important things to me, but there is too much different that I could, I wouldn't use this one. So what you do, you refine the prompt, try and get it closer. And I try again. And so now we have something that, okay, looks a bit better, but no, like th from to get from there to there, right. Those that two stage right there. This is where I share and honestly believe knowing how to, make the best AI art requires skill because an amateur with these AI mm. image generators, what, what do they know to change in the prompt to repair what was wrong in this generation? Would, do they know See, specifically what you need to tweak to get a closer result mm. to what you're after? And so there is a skill element that is needed in this to get the be better results, but even this isn't perfect. Uh, because you can see there's errors. There's still, it's got toes on the feet. It's missing one of the kneecaps, but it is a little better. And so that requires, again, refining the prompt even more. Now that one looks pretty good. That one's a bit <clears throat> better and we're getting closer already, but we're still not there yet. Now you have something to say I can hear. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to, so <clears throat> this, I think this is the big issue. The, the big issue I have, uh, and maybe other people have it too, is that, yeah, so <clears throat> you're de you're defending the process of, of how you make these images look better. It's not just AI. You go in and if people watch your videos, you put it in the Photoshop, you can edit things, you can tweak stuff, you can clone stuff, you can move things around, you can, you know, add all that stuff. And then you continue working on it, the AI generates a new image over the image that you uploaded the problem is that still nothing resembles anything that you started out with see like i this, don't understand how still, you can so, say nothing so, like so what i see what i see here is <laughs> what i see here is is, is 10 percent art that you drew by hand and everything else so far has been the ai generated images with you doing edits now i'm not I'm not going to diss the fact that you're editing and, and putting that into the image. Yes, you are. And you're making it look better granted, yeah, I, but nothing looks the same as what uh, you did. So like to sit back and claim, I just jump to sit back that, and like, claim that it's art though. I, I just, I, I don't understand that from an artist's point of view where I would have well, taken on. your what image. What do you mean you by did, art? And I would have kept I'm not trying to claim. Yeah. I'm not trying to claim traditional, it's, traditional, yeah, well, I'm not, comic I'm not saying it's traditional. Art. Yeah. Never I, trying I'm, to I'm say it's my point is traditional comic book art, but it is art. My point is, you know, you you put these videos together and you've shown the examples of where you start out. Yeah. And you 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 put up a, an image of a uh, of a chick with a similar kind of thing with a sword pose and all that kind of stuff. And you you drew the original image, and then the AI came in and did its thing. The the problem I'm seeing is is from the original image that you hand drew, it, it completely changes the art. The face changes, you know, almost. So the the style that you drew in originally. Now it changes to whatever mask or whatever it is you want to call it has changed it. And it could go from whatever you loosely did in a cartoon style or whatever style it is and changes it into an anime style that has completely changed the image a hundred percent. It doesn't matter if the pose is still the same. The image well, is me, completely that matters a changed. Lot. 
like I don't know how you can say completely. I like I agree there are changes, absolutely. Even and, and there's a definitely a style change, but to me, the most important core aspects of the image, my intent is to keep them the same. And already I've been showing where it's been getting errors in that. We're getting closer with refining the prompt and actually needing to apply skill and knowledge in the in the technology to get it <laughs> to work better. But to say it's completely different, I I I I can't, I cannot see that and get there at all like a good example maybe will be like we'll come back to this image let's come back to this image okay, okay. um we're, we're gonna show it because there's more processes to show right, before we do, we dive too far let me grab a couple of these super chats because people were pouring in some questions and keep your thought process we'll keep rolling on this mm -hmm. uh but i wanted to bring up let's see that was wrong uh ba badass mr badass turner for five dollars says honest question would you be okay with a program program story storing your wife's face slash picture and allowing others to use it at will? Uh, you use other people's art. That's interesting. Interesting because yeah, it's a false equivalency. Hey, though. How is that? Just explain yeah. well, that. Well, well, one is one's express likeness. Okay, and the intent to use someone's face is to duplicate that face, that likeness exactly. AI art, the the way that is meant to be used is to not to duplicate the training images. In actual fact, the training images don't even exist within the models itself. All right. And so this would only be an equivalent example if the intent behind the models was to duplicate the, the training images that were fed into it. And the results were always copies, like actual true, uh, you know, copies that, that um, uh, does breach people's copyright of the training images but that's not how ai art generation works that's not the intent behind it and when there are random duplications that's a complete like like act like no, it's not the result that it was built for it's an accident when they see duplications they actually go back into the model and try and fix it and the only times where you would create something to duplicate the trait you would do it intentionally but even models that are made to uh, imitate a style they're not made to duplicate the training images. They're made to imitate a style within new images. Just like a, you're a talented artist, I'm sure if you put your mind to it, you could make a pretty accurate anime looking image where you're copying a style, but it's a brand new image with a different pose, different character, everything like that. And so you're allowed to actually copy style. You're, like Style cannot be copyrighted at all, e even under strict you know, copyright law. It's duplicating a specific image. And so that's why this uh, super chat is a false equivalence in what they're saying, because the whole purpose behind the primary models of AI art generators is to not duplicate the training images. And, and then these tools can be used to copy in the same way that Photoshop can be used to copy. You can take someone's art, word, art image and put it into image to image and modify it a little bit, just like you can modify it in Photoshop. But that's the person plagiarizing someone's artwork then. Right. It's not a core function of the technology, which many people seem to assume, but they it comes from a misunderstanding. So where does artwork. an image like this get pulled from then? When you when you just put your prompts in, it takes it from the, mm -hmm. the sketch that you showed and it, it puts this map over and now it's this detailed like painted version of this character, where does that get pulled from then? It, no specific one image. It, like it's, it's fascinating how these models work. The AI uh, models, they're trained off of images that are inputted into them, but it doesn't actually record or keep a copy of that image at all. Um, remember, these models are trained mm. off of billions of images terabytes we're talking like like hundreds of terabytes of images right but the resulting models are only like four to seven gig in size which means it's only capable of keeping a couple of bytes of data from each training image it's literally impossible for it to store all those images within the model what's it pulling from it's pulling from its learned processes of how art is supposed to look like it's not pulling from stored images. It literally learns what art is supposed to look like and associates those patterns with words. And so when you type in cat, it's not pulling from an image of a cat. It actually understands what a cat is supposed to look like in the same way a person does. This is why this technology is so amazing. When you draw a cat, like unless you actually are trying to copy a specific image ahead, you just know what a cat looks like. And you can draw a cat. That's so literally how, is the AI how these know models what a cat work. Looks like. 
because that's it, the amazing AI thing. is not a, it's not a human brain. It doesn't have an imagination. Well, well, all well, it can do is sample sample from things it that it's witnessed. It's it's yeah, come yeah, across it, before. So if it that's functions the case, like isn't a human it only, brain. Yeah, it functions like a human brain. That's what a neural network <clears throat> is. A neural network is a, is, a, is a program that literally is built to function like a human brain. And how it learns that, you feed it thousands of images of cats. And then it learns what all, like, it, it learns kind of similarities. It learns patterns, specifically diffusion patterns. That's what really throws people. People don't, well, with stable diffusion, it's diffusion patterns. Um and it literally learns what a cat is supposed to look like in the same way a human understands a cat. That, that's the, that's why this technology is is an, is is an, is incredible and amazing because we're starting to replicate in small ways, in very small ways, the way that a human brain works. That's why people think it's possible to make artificial intelligence through this stuff because we're actually starting to replicate human intelligence at small degrees. This is not artificial intelligence. This is closer to pattern recognition. Okay. Um, in terms of AI art specifically. It's okay. Well, not, you can... something that is something that is a created thing, like, like AI, um, you're saying it feeds stuff through it. It doesn't have, it, it can't create on its own. It has to have something that is fed through it. So like Peter, it, well, here has this... a question. He says, my biggest question okay. is, is this a localized database or access via a server database on the internet? Which is a good question. That I think we all, all are wondering. And on top of that, if it's not that, where does the AI get the images from anyway to say produce an anime style or a painted style or a fantasy mm -hmm. style or a comic book style or anything that resembles something that we can recognize? You can look at something like that and be like, hey, I, I think I've seen that before because it's, mm -hmm. it's got a very familiar style to it. Well, to answer your question, right, can it create something new? If you say it can't create something new, that's in the same way that no human can create something new. They always, you always have to draw inspiration and understanding. You learned how to draw a cat by looking at images of a cat. Mm. You, could you have created what an image of a cat looks like without ever having looked at a cat? Probably not. That's now, kind but, of can, but, but this is the thing. Well, then no one can necessarily create anything new. But we believe people There's can create stuff design. new. But what we do is we get an understanding of what a cat looks like. And then we draw an image of a cat in a new pose, new position, everything. And AI art can do that. And when I say when a human input, like this pose here that we're seeing here, right? I gave the AI image a pose, right? Mm -hmm. It's something specific. And because this is something that I created, something new, in that sense, it's absolutely new. And the AI, because it can, com it can combine like understanding of what things look like from multiple different things, it can create stuff new so much so in ways that the human mind would never have conceived of. Have you seen some of the abstract stuff AI artists spat yeah, out some sometimes? crazy abstract stuff it's out like, there. Absolutely. Like, um, like it's sometimes stuff that no human but, mind would possibly conceive. Maybe but someone. That, but, that but has to it come, can create new. That has to come from somewhere that a human mind did conceive because they're, well, they're, well, it's, they're, if it's being fed anything, it can't well, just create stuff out of thin air. Like there has to be a basis for course, the AI to take from. So humans. it's yeah. taking from, it's got to take from human created things because like we as humans, does. yeah, we can create yeah. from our imagination. We have an well, amazing right, right. imagination. Our brain is, right. is, is, but, awesome. it's required, but it requires inputs and references first from the human AI. No, human imagination. Now I'm talking about in the same way. Yeah, like, but you, you still, regardless of that, it's not a comparative to, to what the AI does. It actually is because I'm real. Is AI what? is not real. AI like is a AI. program, so your AI is sampling from somewhere. My point is that where is it sampling from? Because it, it doesn't create stuff out of thin air. It's got to take a style from something. It's got to take, you know, the skin or whatever it is a from something that's seen. So what is it yeah, training it off of? It's got to train off of something that's a human created Davis's. image. Well, well, yeah. Davis's. And at that point, we're talking about like how do we know that it hasn't been trained off of some of the the best art best artists, best this or that in the world that's been fed it. And if that's the case well, and it's reproducing know it stuff has. in that style, then that is, in my opinion, art theft. Oh no, you can't copy style. You can't copyright style. It's only art theft if it plagiarizes a specific image. See, <clears throat> that's where, that's where I, I, I disagree in a- Well, uh, hang on, can I ask a question? Point of view of it. The, the background here, your, your images, right? Yes. These are yours images, I assume? Yes. They look very similar in style to like Michael Turner and some other artists. 
Okay. Are you are you stealing anything from them by having an art style that's similar to other artists? So style is something different than an already yes. created. Uh, yeah, yes, that's, that's, that's my not point. <laughs> that is exactly my point. I don't because, see that as the point here. No, 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 in, no. In it, this, the, no, it is exactly it is. Unless the AI image spits out an actual copy of an existing artwork, that's plagiarism. Okay, but I can tell it to make an artwork in a, the style of Michael Turner or yourself to make mm. a new, just like if me as myself as an artist, I can try and copy someone's style by hand, just like, or everyone doing duplicating the anime style, right? That's mm -hmm. not plagiarism or copyright at all. Every person ha it can, Im you know, imitate and be inspired by other people's style. Okay, and so they here's can the use thing. AI to do that as well. Here's the thing. My style might be reminiscent of somebody, but it'll never be that person's art style because my style is something learned it's something that i worked at for years technique learning you know how to render how to cross edge how to pose how to draw certain things yeah there are influences in there but the art the style is still uniquely mine it's not a style somebody else's you can't say that hey joe sante's style is mark silvestri's style it's not mm -hmm. it could be a re resemble it but it's something i created from learned experiences as far as learning how to draw. Now, if you put that into the AI, if they, if you say it does the same thing, then that's not learning. It's just taking. It's taking no. somebody's style. It's taking somebody's art and creating it as their own. So it, it to me, that's you know, that stealing. No, you know I'm why? Not, it's not uh, not why? at all, because it's not duplicating the style perfectly. Like even on models that are trained off of specific styles, it oftentimes is combining it with so many other references and everything like that, that it rarely ever is able to duplicate that style perfectly. But even even then, right, just like you're saying, you, you have enough of your own variance on this style to make it your own. Mm. That's not to say that a lot of people... Don't, like, don't do that. There are a lot of people who literally try and duplicate an exact one-to-one -one style. Anime is the perfect example of that. True. Okay. Dragon Ball Z has a more specific anime style that people also copy and duplicate with the intent of making it look exactly like the Dragon Ball Z anime style. Are they stealing? <clears throat> that, you know, in itself might be more or less... In a lazy, not. A lazy. To me, it's lazy. If you're drawing to somebody else's actual <laughs> style, to me, that's that's lazy. If I was to draw, if I spent all my time trying to look exactly like my favorite artist, uh, regardless of all my skill that I might put into it and the way that stuff looks, to me, it's to the that's lazy. I've seen comic book artists out there that look exactly like Jim Lee, that look exactly like Michael Turner to a T. To when you first look at it, you're like, oh. That's Jim Lee. And you're like, oh, wait, it's not. The signature is different, but it's so damn close because that person did nothing except try to look mm. like that artist. I have a problem with that as well. Like, so I'm not justifying see, that at all. I think that's lazy. I think this is equally see, I, uh, as, can as I jump lazy on when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to generating images oh. from known styles. My, my, my point is that AI can't create anything on its own. It's got to pull from somewhere. It's got to pull okay, from okay. somewhere. So it pulls so, from images that are that. created by human right. beings. There's two things that I want to address, right? You're entitled to think it's lazy. I absolutely don't think it's not. When a human does, I actually oftentimes think, see, when people try and imitate other people's style, they're doing because they love that style. I see it more of an expression of, of respect and homage because, you know, what, what's the greatest form of flattery? You know, I, have you ever heard that saying? Imitation mm -hmm. is the greatest form of flattery. Um, and so, no, I, I actually, I don't, but look, I can't change your opinion that you think is lazy. I just, I just think you're wrong on that. Okay. Um, right. And, uh, and when you say that the AI can't make anything new of itself, I think that's one or like wrong for a number of reasons. One, because of the abstract horrors it can make, because it, it's mixing so many inputs to create something new in the same way the humans do. And like this image that we're looking, that's still on in, on screen right now, this is something absolutely new. The AI can't have made this on its own because it's requiring a. Uh, uh, a unique concept that I constructed myself in a unique design, a unique composition that I made from scratch. Is it similar to other poses that exist in past? Yeah, there's similarities to it, but not to the not to the exact point, right? And especially the design. Like we saw the final version of this, which is like a medieval sci-fi crossover with a specific sword and everything. Mm. That's absolutely a unique artwork. That's a, something new that I made with AI tools that I'm really proud of. 
yeah, I'm not talking about pose. Poses can be duplicated. I mean, there's tons of poses. There, there's only so many poses out there. I believe that you can do. You're going to see the same poses over even you know traditional artists drawing are going to put the same pose as some other artist has done a thousand times. Um, my biggest issue, <clears throat> like I said, is not even with the theft of it all, if that's what people want to call. It. I know there's been arguments in the past. Uh, what you're doing seems to be a lot more uh, unique, I guess, to some that just generate something and put stuff out. Uh, bringing back to my original point that I just, it's hard for me, and I know you're not looking for my respect, so don't take this in the fact that that I'm trying to give you, you know, give you and not give you my respect. I'm just saying, in, yeah. in, in a sense, it's hard for me to respect that you can just put in a loose drawing like you did, throw a skin over it, and adjust it a few times and then well, there it is and you can be like look you know this this is mm -hmm. comic book art fantasy art whatever you want to say like you said th this is for a graphic novel right so you're planning uh, on doing concept i don't know i'm novel. gonna hire a human artist to do this okay but so i'm making gonna, the okay, design right. yeah i'm making the design of these characters so i can say this is the main character and i might also be making a like a companion visual um companion or something with the graphic novel that probably will have these artworks that i'm you know initially making now as a, like a you know an additional bit of content that i was able to make with ai art you know with the the graphic novel that i'm wanting to produce uh through this now I'm not trying to, uh, you know, gain your respect either. What I'm trying to show by these images is to show that no, like AI art, when you want something specific, takes intent, even artistic intent, mm. uh, takes work and effort. And then it's going to be up to people's subjective standards, whether they think that is worthy of respect or not. For myself, I gain tremendous artistic satisfaction because like these images here, right, you know, it took more. I took multiple generations to alter, and like I didn't like the pattern. It, it was looking right. too royal, so I removed that. Right, this image you might recognize the the surcoat and the cloak. That that's like okay, that's actually really good. And so what I end up doing is that I grab the best parts from each image that I'm generating here. I change the prompt so it generates better armor, and then it messes up the uh, the you know surcoat completely. It's making it look like armor, but it's making the uh, the um, gauntlets and greaves better that's what I'm, so i'm actually just trying to generate those parts and then i'm going to grab all those parts and in photoshop bring them together which gets me this image and and this image here required several hours work right generating mm. multiple different images to then bring them together and construct to reflect that initial concept and design accurately because the ai just couldn't do it on its own it required so much more work to get there but we're still a long way off of the final product that i want the final image result that i'm after and uh, and uh, you know as time permits I, i'll show you the additional things that's required to get the final image and yeah, I, mean, I don't think even that will convince you or get you caught well, like we we yeah. i'm not trying to change your mind you're not trying to change my <laughs> mind i'm just tr i'm trying to understand a little i had some questions that we can't talk about on twitter because you just Either you don't have enough time or it's hard to go into yeah. to explaining. So just you were designing this stuff and you still plan on bringing in a physical artist to do the book. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, OK, from yeah, from an artist's point of view, if somebody's hiring me onto a mm -hmm. project, you know, to me, that's a collaboration. You're bringing me on because my style, you're bringing me on because my experience, you like the stuff that I do. Um, I don't need or would would want anything that to inspire what you were looking for other than you tell me hey i'm looking for this you know i would like the character that looks like this and then i go in and i design it from scratch from my thought process you know adding into what you want to do it becomes a collaboration Sorry. if i was hired onto a project and someone was like hey this is already created you have to draw everything exactly like what i've just done i personally wouldn't do that because there's, there's no fun in it there's no fun in okay. creating it. everything is already er, already created that's just a personal thing other people might yeah, yeah that is that, a that, so yeah it's just personal. You just don't it, yeah if someone offered you to do superman you would say no because it's a pre-established design and you don't get to add your creativity to it well first of all if i was offered to do superman i'd say no because it probably wouldn't pay enough to uh make it but if the pay was right while. like based on the fundamental principles you're laying out here Oh, I mean, yeah. If the pay was right, yeah, sure. That, that's that's a lot different. But then, hang uh, on. Why do you no, have no, an wait, issue wait, wait, wait? With... That's that's a lot different when you're taking a job when you're talking about working with with an iconic character like Superman. Even with that, 
even in that an artist can take on superman and put their own touch we see artists do it all the time michael turner's superman look different than jim lee's turn superman mm -hmm. uh, why can't they do John that with Burns. my ai references are you using somebody else's character no, 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 these are my characters, my original character designs. And it's a, it's a specific world, specific story, just like mm -hmm. the Shadow of the Conqueror graphic novel, right? That I did with Mike Miller, right? Um, there's a specific character design, and especially the sword, that needs to be done accurately, okay? He absolutely got to add his artistic flair to it, but it's not unreasonable to say, hang on, this is a specific world, specific character, specific design. This is what it needs to look like. Why is there an issue with me having a much better, you know, depiction of it in AI art as a reference and base beginning point than something that was either drawn by myself by hand, which would not be as accurate or defined the thing, you know, even as if well you as did, even if you did the original drawing by your hand mm -hmm. and presented that presented that to me, you know, at least that's that's more than that's more than enough to come up with something on my own and tweak it and do everything i wanted then to, to put all the effort into the ai and present that to an artist i had somebody why is that different why is it different well yeah. <laughs> the the art that you the art that you just put in and you created you took all that time to create i'm just gonna throw in the trash when you show it to me well then you know what would be the point of hiring you if you're not going to be true to the the you know purpose of the project like I, I, I don't think most people would have an issue with a, a reference image that defines a character design if it was made by AI or commissioned by a separate artist. That's the design. You would need to draw it according to the design. Yeah, reference. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying with, with references. That, that's one thing. But bringing in like I had this conversation with, with a guy on your on your feed was the same thing. It's like I'm making a book. I'm creating all this stuff through AI so I can just give it to an artist. And I said, if I was an artist being brought onto that project, I would really have no interest if you were handing me all this this already pre-made stuff detailed wise that I have no real input in in creating that I'm just being hired to draw exactly what it is. It's taking the artistic freedom away from me to tweak anything if you're telling me about your story if you and i sat down and you're like hey joe i want to hire you i got this story blah 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 you go into all this detail we have meetings we we come to a, a mind or uh we come to a meeting of a mind about it. i'm sitting down there I'm, I'm sketching away as you're telling me then that's me pouring my own ideas into into the art without the kind of reference that's to, for the artistic freedom of an artist that's what i'd be looking for the straight up and this goes to anybody uh to backtrack a little bit this goes to anybody that's like here i hand drew all these or this was the artist that came before me if i was coming onto a project i would be like i want to make this project my own you brought me on because you want me for a specific your reason i'm going to make the project my own you and i are going to sit down i'm going to create from my own mind my style and make what i make that's coming from my imagination i'm not going to base it on something else now if that's not what you're looking for yeah obviously you won't hire me but i'm just saying from this is a personal point of view and not not speaking for all artists out there i'm speaking for joe Santag. that's it mm -hmm. if that yeah. was the case and you were presenting all this stuff to me i would instantly be turned off because it's just i have no passion in doing that i have passion in creating with you if we were doing a project together creating with you based on what you are telling me and it allows me to do all the visuals and put it all together mm -hmm. personally that's why that if the AI design, the AI art, all you spent, all the hours you spent tweaking and putting everything into it is going to, even if that was the case, is going to look vastly different on the page anyway. Yeah, because you would ha you have your own style that would be put to it. I, I, I got no issue with that. I, I think it's not necessarily reasonable, but if you're consistent with it, fine. I, I, and I would just expect you'd be consistent with it if you were given references, if there were AI art made or not, if you were asked to, you know, draw the uh uniforms accurately and the starships accurately in a star trek graphic novel or something like that that would just be an expected thing that you be true to the design if you're taking over an established project yes i, I get you if you're taking over an already established thing then that's mm -hmm. it's got story it's got establishment it's got fan base you want to keep true to that if you're taking over a brand new project is what i'm talking about well these like, are my projects you, right it, it's it, it's a brand new project though again no, no, we're, no, not they, working, these are, we're not I, working I, together I, just, just like with i know but just like with my novels and everything when I'm creating a project, it's my project, and I have a very specific vision that I want it to be like. And you know, if an artist wants doesn't want to work with me on that, it's fine. We wouldn't work together. But I don't think it's unreasonable at all to have a specific vision in mind for a project and expecting 
designed to be according to the way that you show and have done yourself because I have that artistic, you know, input in the project as well that I want it to look a specific way because it is my story and artistic vision. And I don't think there should be an issue with the fact that these references would be AI made or not, unless you have an issue with, you know, the morality of the technology, that's a separate discussion. But in terms of just having images made by AI and there's no issues with the way that they're made, it's just the fact that AI, I don't, I don't see any issue with that at all. No, I was just coming from a, a personal yeah. point of view. Yeah. From my point of view, when I look at that, if somebody was to hand me that and be like, Hey, here's a project, here's all this already yeah. done, you know, art, and I want you to base everything off on this. It just hampers my creativity as an artist. And I've yeah, done yeah. That and on, I, look, I actually project. get that. I get that because I'm a bit. The he froze. Getting back here in a second. Lieutenant Hughes for a member for 11 months says, I understand views. I understand Shad's views on AI. Hey, I, I'm, am I back? Am I You're back? back. You're back here. Let I'm me finish back. reading this yeah. real quick. Of his character, since I struggle with getting my own vision from others, but I understand Joe's view as an artist. My whole part point on that is the collaboration and it's the same thing with any physical you know mm -hmm. person that came with if you wanted if you okay i've been hired for a project before and never went through that was very specific and when i sit down i'm like there's all this i'm like i'm the wrong person you hired the wrong person because this one is not my style this is not what i want to draw you're not giving me the artistic freedom to change things and do what i want that was kind of where my point my point was basically coming from that when something is so set in stone you're you're basically like this is a finished piece of art it's got to look exactly like this is my vision i'm just saying within hiring artists like me that kills my artistic uh excitement for the project because of that because i'm not I actually kind of understand yeah, i can't understand that to an extent like I, I, I when people have tried to hire me for commissions in the past I don't have the passion because it's not my character it's not my own creation and stuff and that, and that i think just comes from a person who I guess they, they're more involved in the process of creation and, and they want, and that's, that's a subjective thing. And so if funnily enough, I probably feel more like you, if someone was trying to get me to work on their project where I want to work on my own project, but as a result, because I'm so passionate about the specific project and the vision I have for it, Holy shit. that's why I need that vision to be accurate to the project that I set forward, you know? Yeah. All right, um, <clears throat> kind of getting away from the, the things I really wanted to focus on, but let me try to bring it back here. But I did notice, I'm jumping you guys' super chats real quick. Uh, John for $100, holy shit. Uh, wow. <laughs> thank you, man. Like, that was not necessary, but I appreciate it. Uh, what are your thoughts on AI once it can uh, spit stories in three seconds when it takes you two months to write? Uh, you'd be okay with people having so much pride in their writing. It's 100% coming. It just has to learn which story pacing people like objective combos and what makes a hero etc even though that has nothing to do with the comic book aspect of it I, there are some uh writers novelists in the chat and they have brought that up in private conversations too like mm -hmm. what do we do when that when that's the case because that's not writing right like so if you had a story you're like i'm not the greatest writer right but ai can write this story and have all uh, the pacing that i need you know you can produce it in a professional uh, fashion and then i can just Put that out there and i can say i wrote it uh isn't that pretty much the kind of the same thing we're talking about here it, the computer's doing the work for you and so again how can you take pride in something that the program is doing for you now granted your stuff you're designing for your own book i actually really have no real issue with that if you're going to hire a an actual artist or whatever my well, I do intend to make fully AI. Yeah, I'm going to do that, but I also want to make AI art image graphic novels as well. I'm going to do both is my intent. Okay, I guess we can, that would probably be more of an issue that I have and we could actually talk about yeah. that when it comes to sequential storytelling and whatever. But I mean, how do you reconcile something like that? If AI is being used, let me rephrase it this way. I see a lot of the championing of AI and stuff. And one thing I see is if AI gets to a point where there are so many people jumping on thinking like, you know, I can skip all this process. I can become an AI guy and I can just generate all this stuff. If the industry, any industry ever went to AI hiring, you're probably only going to give a few jobs because the jobs are going to go to like a handful of people that can produce every single thing. And AI producers, artists, creators, whatever you want to call them are going to basically be a dime a dozen. Styles are all going to look the same because you can prompt everything you want exactly the same. There's not going to be any distinguishing uh, aspect between you and somebody else. Whereas in a real drawn picture or a real writer, there is absolutely distinguishable qualities between people. 
So I think you've taken a number of um, assumptions in all in a lot of what you're saying what I do. here. Yeah, yeah, uh, but some I think false assumptions and conclusions there because first off, to answer the, like the super chat, if someone makes like a story with AI, you know, help and it's a great story, my reaction is awesome. We have more great stories in the world to enjoy. Um, Created by that, AI. No, no, no. Well, the thing, this is where you get the um, false kind of assumption there is to make a good story with AI, you're going to need to be a good writer. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to tell what's good in what the AI spits out. I mean, I can speak from firsthand experience here as a writer, okay, an author, right? Um, I've so seen good writing. No, 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 I've seen good writing and bad writing, okay? And there are a lot of earnest, hardworking people who really want to, you know, write stories and stuff. And they've sent me samples to review. Like, well, that's one of the things that we've, I've done on my channel where they send in their writing samples and they ask for feedback and stuff. And they have tried their very best to make a good piece of writing, but they lack okay. the experience and ability sure. to see what was wrong with it. And that's the exact same with uh, um, AI, anything that you use to write with AI. If you are not a, already have talent to be able to determine the difference between good and bad writing especially with prose especially with sentence structure pacing there are so many complex things that you need to understand to write a like a legitimately professional passable you know uh, work that if you're not aware of ai is not going to help you get ai and that there might be some pieces that are like half and half where the ai got stuff right but they didn't like they didn't have the experience to actually know what was good and bad and 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 improve upon but that means the best is just going to rise to the surface okay and the best you know ai assisted writing if it's a legitimate story great we got another great story in the world to enjoy i i flip and love that i i see no problem with having more great art in the world i i have a <clears throat> i have a big problem with with things that are created by a program and not by human beings and just put out there for like you said, if you know how to write a good story, you prompt your whatever. I don't even know how it works with, you know, we're talking about comic book art, but since John sent the hundred dollars super chat, I'll try to, you know, and talk about the novel. So whatever prompts you might do to actually write a novel, it goes out, you go in, you do your edits and blah, blah, blah. And then you put it out. So now you're putting out a book, theoretically, I'm not saying you, but you put out a book and it's, you know, so-and-so title written by, by AI assisted by Chad M. Brooks. Mm -hmm. you know like what is the what is the point of anybody reading reading that because it's not the the human brain mean, if it's a good story the human imagination for telling a story for telling it telling it with passion telling it with uh whether it's you know romance whether it's uh sci-fi horror all that kind of stuff people are attracted to the stuff that humans do like i like human creation really i like really? human creation if you because i, to, cause I if thought you the writing a, in I thought the writing in She Hulk was pretty trash, and that was made by humans. Well, I'm supposed it has to be good still. There's there's good and bad. Uh -huh. in anything. There's the difference. You, you can't there's just you can't just you can't just say that there's bad well, you, stuff in human well, writing. That's and my bad point. Art and human art, so it justifies well, everything. The you point can't is, put if there's human, an art, you can't just say, if there's a piece oh, sorry, of art, if there's a piece of art that's created by an artist drawn by hand, I can see that. I can respect it. I can enjoy it as another human being. I can sit back and say, wow, that person was talented enough to do that themselves whether it's art whether it's athletic ability whether it's acting whatever i can sit back and 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 be respectful and in awe of the human ability to do that when a computer does that it's just it's a soulless lifeless thing it's just a copied you know algorithms or whatever that has produced something yeah it might be tweaked by human hands but if you're like hey this is an ai story would you read it i'd be like no why would i there's no if human there's story? no human heart behind it there's well, no human on. heart behind it. there's no human imagination you're behind it. like that's a subjective thing that you're imposing on it you know, like because like for my images because it takes so much human input and artistic intent and it's my vision i started with that vision that was the first vision i had and i was able to use ai tools to depict that vision i see heaps of human intent um behind it and soul and all all of those things so to just blanket say that it has no soul and uh, ai did it all to you but I, one i think it's a false premise that you're saying because it requires so much human input usually to make the best results anyway and uh, when you're saying that you value the the human aspect to it so do mm. i well, like i said like i think a handmade piece of art right that's tr legitimately good will always be superior to an AI piece of art that's also legitimately good. But I think 
a gorgeous piece of AI art is more valuable than a trashy piece of human made art. Okay. Um, I don't put just because humans had, you know, um, involvement in it makes it automatically superior. No, it needs to be good. She Hulk was trash and the writing was trash. And yes, I agree. And uh, it might have been, it, honestly, if they used AI, <laughs> it might have been a lot better. Um, but by the way, we're a far way off the technology being able to write stories, like AI being able to write stories of any complexity or depth or anything like that. So well, it'd take a while to get there. Um, but if it's actually legitimately good and it has human intent, or even if it doesn't have, most will have human intent because a human is initiating creation. And so it's hard to say it doesn't have human intent behind it when most of it does. But even then, even if it doesn't have human intent, if it's a legitimately good story, absolutely I can enjoy and appreciate it. It's like, like a story doesn't need to have been made by a human to be good. Just like I see art in nature, you know, humans don't need to have made it to see beauty in nature humans don't need to have made a story for if it's a legitimately good story that has something like imagine that has a movie message imagine if it was like lord of the rings okay if an mm. ai could make something of the caliber of lord of the rings it would have inherent value for the quality of the story itself regardless of how it was made <clears throat> i just have a hard problem a hard time with that uh personally chad because that, that's fine. That's I'm, that is absolutely. I think fine. most people are attracted to the the human element of things, the emotion. You know, like I said, soulless. Like you just you can't capture the same kind of human quality emotion when writing. So if somebody is writing something, and let's say they're writing a very emotional scene, that writer usually can pull from something emotional in their past and put it into you know, fictionalized into their work and they can pour that, that passion, that hurt, that pain, the sadness, whatever, whatever you want to call it into it. You can feel it as you're writing or you're reading it. You can feel it as you're reading it as that person is depicting it. You know, a machine can come through and type the same kind of story. It's not going to have that kind of human element that you're looking for. There's no connection there. It's a soulless connection. Even if you had the same kind of words, there's a difference in the way that it's, that it is written as perceived as put down. You know, you're not, it's, to me, you're not ever going to replace that human uh, emotion, the soul of what art is. It goes to comic book art. It goes to read or um, writing as we're talking about novels, kind of got away from the comic book stuff. But let's bring it back to the comic book stuff for a second. Uh, that there, when I look at somebody's art, uh, my favorite artists, I see the the life that's in there. I see the soul that is in that art. If I look at a bad artist, that is just doesn't really know how to draw or, you know, whatever you can see lifelessness in that art too. You know, it's, it, it's all around, but that is the human element. When I see AI art, whoever makes it, it's usually pretty stiff. It's not dynamic. There's not a lot of life to it. It's just a sometimes pretty generated picture. But to me, that's not comic book art because comic book art comes from a different place. There's, you know, dynamic action, poses, emotion, storytelling, all within a, uh, just a flat picture, you know, just a cover can have it. The picture you show me of the stuff that you've done, even the, the dynamic pose of the chick with the sword that you've shown off on, on Twitter X or whatever, mm -hmm. it can look good as far as a mask puts over it. You can tear it apart. You know, people can go in and tear it apart and say, this looks off, this looks off, blah, blah, blah. But all together, the art in general doesn't have any soul to it it's not dynamic it's flat you know what i'm saying like well, then that, you have that's nothing biggest... to worry about well, you I have don't... nothing to worry about as an artist then i don't have if, i don't hey, have any i don't even need have... to worry about in general no 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 but you have artist. to pick one extreme because it's either going to be one or the other either it'll never be as good as human art and you can objectively see the lacking quality in ai art versus human-made art as you're describing you're saying there's an objective something there's an objective flaw that ai art will never be able to overcome and therefore human artists have nothing to worry about because they will always be able to make superior art then because of the human component or it legitimately can make equivalently good art into on a technical level that can cause emotional responses from people and stuff like that and then, you know, then the whole fear mongering of it's going to replace, you know, humans and stuff. It's one of the, it's one of the, it's one of the extremes. It seems like you're saying it'll never be good enough, which means artists have nothing to worry about. Here's the thing that <clears throat> I look at as a dangerous precedent. And I'm not saying 
you in general because your process you do put some time in in editing your your a lot AI of time generated art the dangerous precedent that ai can put out there and one of the reasons why i have a gripe with the videos that you kind of put out championing it saying like this is you know a great technology you should jump into it people that don't have the want to get better to know how to draw to learn technique to put the time and effort into becoming better themselves are going to go in and just start skipping steps it's not going to help them as an artist it's not going to help them grow as a person and it's going to cheapen because it it, there's no way that you're going to be able to go and say i'm going to put this very loose pose in or even no pose and just prompt something in and create art you're 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 killing that person's ability to learn how to draw you should learn how to hang on hang on you should become a better you should become a a better artist hang on hang on on. hang on on you've made a massive false assumption there though no i got a point to it's going to make every uh, a generation of people lazy to the point where they're like i don't need to learn all this no it's not wait 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 wait. when it comes to comic books specifically okay there's an art form to comic books there's an art form to Mm. sequential storytelling you know how you move somebody through a page how you tell a story on the page is not just the art you're going to have people that can be like well i can just skip all that because i can put prompts in and this is going to generate this uh pose that i want i'm going to put this panel here i'm going to put this panel here blah 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 i'm going to create a comic book i'm going to put it out to me that's it disrespects the medium of comic book storytelling and it cheapens what we do now that's never going to threaten real artists like me and a lot of the artists i see in the chat it's not going to threaten what we do but it's going to cheapen a lot of stuff it's almost like movies where people can make you know the lowest quality movies and put it out you cheapen cinema by some b movie that just hits the dvd racks or streaming or whatever it's not the same it really? nowadays, I, I cinema, not, nowadays sim is a bad I example because a lot more. of stuff is bad but it's going to cheapen what we do yeah. it's going to cheapen what we do because people are going to come in and take all these stuff okay. that they, they can do this uh, blah 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 because you can do prompts you can put words in it, it generates art and now boom you think you are an artist Okay, um, look, I want to apologize for always trying to, you know, interrupt and things. It's, but you, you mentioned no, one fine. point. Yeah, yes. You mentioned one point that I feel really needs to be addressed, but oftentimes then you lead into another point and then there's too many things to try and address because... Yeah, I'm sorry. Know, I, I ramble sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, you, you were I'm first getting my talking, thoughts out. Yeah. yeah you, you were first talking and making many, like, I feel really just false assumptions based mm. on not a lot of evidence or experience in mm. assuming that using ai tools will stop people wanting to develop as artists i think that's such a false notion um that comes from a misunderstanding of the technology i'm experiencing the exact opposite uh, starting oh. using ai tools has only reinvigorated my visual artistic pursuits and made How me want to get better your, your physical art by using the AI, ai tools so well because the initial poses are requiring a correct anatomy and so that's forcing me to try and draw better anatomy uh the lighting is a big issue so so i'm trying to learn better lighting you know um com- like understanding so then i can correct the ai to get better lighting uh something that is going to be a real interesting challenge for me is uh merging the background and the the character because they often need to be done separately and i'm going to have to just develop an artistic eye that i honestly have trouble trying to see to see all right this is how i can blend those images together and it is forcing me to progress as an artist and and develop more artistic skills far more from using the technology and so people saying that it will make people lazy i'm experiencing the exact opposite if you're actually wanting to make specific result like legitimately good works with this technology and you're committed to wanting to make good quality Mm. It, you actually need to develop as an artist to get that quality. And so that's the, like if the first notion that artist, you were saying. Why, why do you need AI? If they were, if, no, well, if hang on, hang on. Was... I, like, because that was the first kind of thing that I, that you mentioned and, and addressed. Okay, and I also just want to go mention on. that you were saying like bad cinema cheapens good cinema. I couldn't disagree more. I think the mm. bad films actually just help contrast the quality difference. And to say that, you know, a crappy film someone somehow makes Lord of the Rings lesser, I could not disagree more with you there. Like Lord of the Rings is quality and it stands on its own and it doesn't need to rely on the non-existence of bad works to know that it's good. In actual fact, it's bad works that oftentimes helps paint a contrast to see the difference. Because I tell you what, I have a newfound appreciation for the Star Wars prequels ever since the Star Wars sequels came out. Um, And so uh, oftentimes... 
bad quality stuff helps us appreciate the good. Um, but okay, so you were wanting to address the development of the artist where you were saying, yeah. why, why don't I just develop an artist without AI tools? Why don't digital artists develop pen drawn, drawn paintings without digital tools? It's because we enjoy the medium. I'm liking the results of the a what I can do with AI tools. It's empowering me to do so much more with these well, tools than me, without. So why the heck push, wouldn't I want to use it? Let me push back on that a, a little bit. Okay. A digital artist using you know, a digital paintbrush or whatever in a program like Clip or something like that, they still have, majority of them, still have the ability to paint in real life to do that exact same work in real life it's just a easier expression on digital because you're saving money on paper on whatever tools because it's all being done digitally but you are still doing it yourself you have the creative uh eye and you're doing it with your hand and you can create art that's that's different than prompting what about a, photography well photography again that has nothing to do with what i'm talking about because i'm focusing well, solely no, that, on physical well, the, created uh, art when it comes to comic okay, book okay. art or fantasy art i'm not diving no, no, into but, but if we're talking and anything else like that to the me the reason that, why it's to me important. that's a to me that's a, a straw man argument because we want to jump no, into a different medium no about, no because about ai art is a different medium it seems like art. you're trying to make an equivalence art, between, artist. okay but you're trying to make an equivalence between hand-drawn art and ai art when i'm not drawing that equivalence i'm saying it's a new medium all right. And so that's why photography is such an important comparison. And it's not a straw man because it's a process that is using a machine to create an artistic result. Right. AI art is doing the same. I'm not trying to say it's equivalent to hand drawn art. It can make art that can be used in equivalent ways, the comic book art. Right. Well, but I'm not saying it's digital the same. art. That's why I was pushing back. On, oh, yeah. Yeah. On, but the better the comparison art. then. Yeah. yeah and the, the comparison, comparison I was. Because... Yeah, yeah I, I see better people comparison when they, is when they do a comparison to Photoshop yeah. or digital art or all that stuff. Like it's it's not the same comparison because it's not the same thing. Well, there are similarities in terms of using AI technology to uh, cut corners and get a computer to do something for you. Like there are so many renders in Photoshop in which you can use cloud tool, you, you know, the cloud render and then use certain blending things to get a result. I've seen Absolutely. people draw amazing maps right and i would push back. without would doing push really back any hand drawn I, push back. I push back on that as much as is the same thing too for the most part really? digital art oh, well, the, the, at least part, you're consistent at least yeah, you're consistent I'm, then i'll be consistent uh, on but, it digital okay, good, for the most good. part hold on a second let me talk for the most part digital artists know how to draw and they're using the tools that are available to them to draw now if you are using cheats like if you're using a brush that that produces uh an insane pattern of cross hatching and all you have to do is touch that pen down and it creates a pattern of cross hatching and you do that i have issues with that because that's not drawing you're not doing that yourself you're relying on something else you're relying on a brush to produce that art so i've, I've pushed back on that as well but that that in itself is a little percentage of what people do it's not a giant percentage as in the ai creating stuff for you now like i was going back to my original question if you as an artist your skill now as a, as a physically drawn physical uh, medium if you were to take away the AI, you don't have the ability now to produce these these beautiful pictures with your prompts and your edits. How is that improving your actual physical drawing to the point where you could potentially get to something like that on your own without the assistance to? of the AI? Why should it need to improve? You Wouldn't you like, want it to? Not necessarily. As an artist, like, 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 producing is trying like, to get better, but that goes back to my point: is like, no, no, hang on, it, hang that, on, that breeds the laziness. Not saying no, specifically no, it you, doesn't. you know. I'm, no, but it breeds like, the laziness and the, and the person is like, I don't need to skip those steps or I don't need to do those steps. I can skip it because I can go to I can go from A to B without, you know, learning anything. Oh, why? Disagree. Why? If you take AI away and your art is what you are. Technology disappears, right? Technology is boom, all, one day gone, gone. You, all you have is your physical tools, tools to draw with. That is your skill. That is what you have. You spend so much time in AI and designing and, and editing and all that kind of stuff. You're not improving the physical art that you are trying to produce. So to me, that is that that's lazy. That's lazy when it's producing when, when you are producing that art. You're not improving yourself okay. in any way to where you can be the same quality artist. Like digital artists, the pad disappears. They can go to a piece of paper, draw the same thing they just did digitally. Photoshop, you know, similar depending on what you were doing. Colorist. You lose the ability to color digitally. You can still grab, you know, markers or, or paints or whatever, and still color just as beautiful to a point. Not just, to just a point. as beautiful to a point. There was some amazing colors um, out there. 
you know, traditional physical colors with the, with the tools that they have produced in some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. And they don't need that with the digital stuff. So if that disappeared, they still have that skill because they took the time to learn that before they did something else. It's not the same with an AI. I like I I disagree so much with what you said there because to me the skill that someone has to drive a Formula One racer is a legitimate skill even though they can't use that skill without the car you know um, and everything that you said there describes photography okay like, like why does uh, you know using photography um, somehow why is photography lessened because you're not developing painting skill when you use a camera you know like. I, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, like AI art shouldn't have to develop all these other artistic things that you're finding value in, but because you can develop skill with AI tools, it's its own art form. And you, but, and then you can apply other artistic abilities and tools like drawing. And when you really want to get the best, your notion that it doesn't encourage you to develop as an artist is completely false. It actually does. If you really wanted to get the best <clears> results with AI tools, you need to then develop other artistic abilities to add into the process. If I, as an artist, drew, I let's just say my extended drawing was, I knew basic anatomy, I could draw a pose. Um, I wasn't really good at rendering or making something look 3D with lighting, you know, all the stuff it takes to make something really, really good. And I, I draw something. And then I take that piece of art and I go to another artist that, let's say an inker or whatever, that's really good at what he does. And I give it to him. I'm like, hey, make this look make this look better. And he basically goes over and he finishes it out and looks, looks, looks awesome. Looks doesn't look anything like what I did, but it looks awesome. I'm just like, man, wow, that's incredible. And I take it and I get it colored by somebody and I take it back. And then I put it out on, on the internet, the interwebs and say, look at the art that I did. Yeah. These other guys did the majority of it, but I did the base of it. I tweaked this stuff here or there. This is my art. That would be the equivalent of AI artists. What do you mean, like taking credit for uh, a colorist? Taking credit for something that something something else has done that somebody else did. In your case, the AI created eighty percent of what what you do. In my case, I just went and hired the best I could hire, mm -hmm. and made me look awesome. It's not my art anymore. It's somebody well, else's on. art, it, but well, I there are, still it has your art it. component in it. And I don't think just because someone if wants my to stuff, hire, you can't even resemble what I did. It has my art component is no longer in it. It's not my well, art. Well, if, if it I draw resist, something no, and somebody on, finishes it over and completely changes it, my art is gone. Yeah, I have nothing really in that art anymore. I can't unless, sit there and take hang on, unless you were the one who was doing the you know uh, change and stylistic alteration over it and guiding it. Let's then just say I got you. something back, right? <clears throat> can Let's I just jump I on? Took... Can I just jump on this super chat here because it's a massive false equivalence. I've never tried to claim that. Uh, uh, like an AI artist is equivalent to a hand-drawn artist or that a photographer is the same as a landscape painter. I've actually been trying to multiple times say that this, this is a different medium. It's a different artistic medium. And a photographer is an artist in their own right as a photographer, not as a landscape painter, mm. they're different mediums. And an AI artist is an artist in a completely different medium to hand-drawn art. I think, have I not been clear about making that distinction? I think I've said it multiple times. <clears throat> so back to my point okay if i draw something that is completely ached over by somebody else right what i drew is completely gone doesn't you've already anything. drawn a false equivalence you're saying but, someone else is doing it imagine you draw something and then you put a pendulum over it and you push the pendulum and it changes you know the image enough to be considered different just because it pendulum was doing most of the work you initiate it you're the one who caused that change and it's a change that you wanted just because it was an automatic process that you initiated doesn't mean that you are not the sole creator responsible for causing it and that's, so that's you're, completely, like you're drawing a false equivalence when you're bringing in someone else's intent it's a completely different example by doing the pendulum thing that Why? so what i'm doing is directly relating it to what ai does so instead no, of someone you else, you're, you're is, trying to compare it to someone else, being else. another artist that's drawing over me and changing my art, and making it better, completely destroying as far as destroying what I did. That's gone. That, that doesn't exist anymore. What exists now is this beautifully drawn, rendered picture that somebody that knows what the hell they're doing has put together. Looks amazing. My original art, 
gone. It doesn't exist. It's not there anymore. That other person, that is AI. That is AI. That's you know what AI is doing. Uh, you know why it's not? Is because why? I'm telling the AI to do that. Your analogy is you're saying someone <laughs> else is taking. No, no, your analogy is some, you're saying someone else is taking their art and applying their own artistic intent to bastardize the image and change it to what they want. No, no, no. Your analogy would be equivalent if you gave your image to another artist and then held their hand and then said, "Do, do exactly what I'm telling you to do," mm. and I want the image to look this exact way. Now, again, I'm not trying to say it's equivalent to doing it by hand, but the director analogy is interesting because I believe, like film directors, artists, but did they do everything manually by hand? Were they responsible to every single part? Did Michelangelo paint every single part of the Sistine Chapel? No, he didn't. But he directed it, and it was strictly according to his vision, his intent, and the result was according to what he wanted. And so, yes, film directors are artists, and yes, AI artists are artists. And if I use an AI, you know, image generator, a tool to depict what I want, what is my artistic vision, that's me doing it. It's not handing it over to someone, uh, someone else's creative process to do what they want and you don't have control over it. You can maintain control over it to depict what you want, and therefore you're the artist. So let's say you have the artistic vision. Mm -hmm. that still you're still putting prompts in and somebody else is doing it so it's the same it is the exact same thing no, if i not. drew something and i drew something very very loosely let's let's take it to a comic book uh example mm -hmm. so when someone does layouts in a book they get credit for doing the layouts and then you get a guy that comes in and does the finishing he gets the overall credit for the art because he goes over the art and makes it the art what the layouts are it completely disappear to your point if i was drawing something say i drew a stick figure we'll just go really really crude with it all i draw a stick figure and i give it to mark silvestri and i'm like mark uh you're 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 the goat you're the badass uh can you make this stick figure look like uh witchblade and i want her hair blowing in the wind and i want her sitting in a pose with her her back arched her her legs kind of to the side i want her smiling a little bit maybe eyes a little squinted I want a really cool uh, background. Give me, give me a darkness background. Throw Jackie in there, by the way, and make this a, a darkness witchblade piece. And he goes and mm -hmm. takes that, that stick figure, comes back with this beautifully drawn render piece. And then I take that. I'm like, thanks, Mark. That's badass. Appreciate it. And I throw it up on, online and be like, guys, look what I did. Look at my art, because my art is still in there, right? That stick figure is still in there. So apparently that still counts as my art, even though somebody else completely did it based on the things I, I asked them to do to a T. That is what point, AI is doing. No, can you identify what you do? Can you identify the other artist that did the work for me with an AI generator? Say it one more time. Can you identify the artist that was involved with the uh, AI generating the image? that to me that's a that's a that's strong no 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 matter. it's not it doesn't no, matter you know why you know why let's take the because name out let's take you're, you're let me constructing let me no, no, hang on let me finish come on joe thing. let me finish my stick figure same joe, thing that joe did nobody joe, i just let you, you know talk for a while come and on, they let do me the exact same thing take the name off put the take the name off throw mark sylvester's name off the reason why it's better than me has Joe, done the Joe, exact same thing. On. If the name is what's tripping you up. No, no. If the, the name the, is what's what, tripping what, you up. What's, what's happening is you're drawing a false equivalence by trying to say that this is someone else. Hmm. No, no. You're, you're trying to say this is someone else. This is not someone else. This is a computer uh, that is soulless, right? That I'm using as a tool, okay? I can't give credit to any other person involved in it because there's no other person involved in it, all right? In actual fact, because there's no other person involved in it, it required so much direction on my behalf. Am I saying it's equivalent to someone, to me doing by hand? I've never said that, okay? And look, there is more of an equivalence to identify it as a director, except with AI, you're required to do far more manual input to get the best results than a director does with a film, but the director still calls it his film, do we not? It's not the same thing. No, it is it, the same. It, no, it's Hang not. on. If you want it's to draw not. an analogy of hiring other people to help take part in a creative process. Yeah, but well, you're going right? from comic books it, to, is, is, to Hang on. Is Jurassic Park. Hang on. Is movies Jurassic directly Park, have a team. Uh, answer this. Is Jurassic, is Jurassic Park Steven Spielberg's film? He directed it. It's his film, though, isn't it? 
Shad, this it has is. nothing to no, do with, with comics. And and he has every right to say it's his film because it was his specific vision. Although he used other people to help achieve and produce that vision, it was his vision. And so it's his film. And so if you want to, even if you want to go with the director analogy, okay, in the claim of ownership, we can go that way. And there's exact equivalence with a director. And it is his film because it is his artistic vision that he ensured was depicted through his direction. But with AI art, it actually involves no other people and oftentimes a lot of manual input on your behalf. It is not an equivalent of someone <laughs> doing it by hand, but cool. it is a new art form. And because it is their artistic vision and they're in control of it throughout the whole thing, just like Jurassic Park is still in Steven Spielberg's film and he can call claim ownership over it. Same with people making AI art. Okay. I feel like you're taking a big leap from going from comic books to try to uh, make it the equivalent of making a movie. And I think that's the thing that we, that everybody that tries to defend AI art in any form does. They go to like the, the biggest, widest example that they think makes sense. And it, it doesn't, you're just, you're avoiding, you're avoiding what my analogy was. Because my analogy because it's a was false directly, analogy. I don't see, I, I can analogy. see what you're it's trying directly, to. Uh, it's directly no, related no. to what, AI well then, does. how can you not see how the director is replacing my is person with AI? That's, that's well, all no. it is. You know why? Because you're then trying to render down the process of creating AI art with just text to prompt, whether it's an instant thing, where it doesn't apply. Your analogy doesn't apply when it requires so much manual input from myself, and it doesn't apply because it's actually not another human that can claim ownership over the image. Like, can you understand that that aspect? There's no other human that can claim ownership over the image. Therefore, the only person that has any right to claim ownership is the only person that actually had an, an actual involvement in the process of its creation. Therefore, if we were to try and say who can claim ownership of something, even in just like discovering gold or something like that, right? Because there's no previous claim by another person on it. It, you own it now, okay? Just okay. because, same with AI, right? There's no other person that can claim ownership over this specific image. And therefore, the only person has any right to claim that it's theirs and they create it is the only person that had any level of input in its creation. That's why it doesn't, in, you can't, your analogy doesn't work because it doesn't involve another person. If it did involve another person, then just like with the um, colorist, yeah, I can't say I made it because, but because, I was the one telling the computer, I need you to color, and then I'm color in this way and do all this input and everything like that. And there's no one else. Who, who is the sole person responsible for this image's creation? It's the person that triggered the, the process of its creation. They're the creator. All right, let me give you another analogy. Okay. Since the person, the, the other person was tripping you up. <clears throat> if I drew something, we'll go with a stick figure again. Except this time, a little bit more detailed. Maybe I draw some boobs on it because I like boobies. I draw the <laughs> stick figure of boobies. I, I put it out there. And then I take uh, my 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 nib, my quill, and my ink. And I take my ruler, and I set them down right next to this. And I say, generate this picture for me. Finish it out for me. And then they do. Magically. We'll say magic exists in my world. Mm -hmm. And they finish out the picture, and it's all said and done. I see something on it. I'm like, I'm going to tweak this. I white out this little area, and then I add a little line there, and I hold it up. I'm like, hey, guys, look what I did. Mm -hmm. That's AI art. If you had the magic, the magic was coming from you? The, the magic is AI. Yeah, yeah, but you're in control of the AI, so you're in control of the magic. <laughs> <laughs> you get see what I'm going there with that? No, I don't. No, hang on, hang on. When you use an AI art generator, who's in control of it? The person using it. No, what you did yes. is type words. You didn't control no, anything. That's, that's how you control it, through words, of course. All right, all right. Imagine, <laughs> let me give you a counter analogy. Imagine you had a magical pen okay. that only responded to your directions through words. And you say, pen, go up. Draw a line at this angle, this round. Now do a curve and do this. And it's, con and it's requiring your constant input and direction verbally to depict an image you have in your mind. You would be the creator, wouldn't you? You, like if you, <laughs> like, if, hey, no, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, because you're the one creating it through your direction. 
And okay, let's let's go. It with, seems like it seems like we're your... just not going to like we have vastly different perspectives on that th this point specifically, and I don't think we're going to change each other's mind. But I do think we've expressed our points of view <laughs> accurately enough. Yeah, yeah, definitely have. Let's jump into some super chats here. I know a bunch of people have some questions. Uh, that was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking one ninety nine. We're talking comics. I know we keep jumping from other examples. John for another ten dollars. Director calls it this film but the studio stamped their names at the very start uh where's the artist names that trained the program See? so hang on a couple, couple of things in the terms of yes, the studio. not it. always it, it depends on the initial contract that's set up as to who owns the actual intellectual property of the film um i think in a lot of instances uh our directors still own intellectual property of the of the core ip of the film and so anyway that like it that depends uh where's the artist's names that trains the program the artist didn't train the program at all uh, the images we use to train it, okay, but the actual training happened from the programmers themselves that develop the technology. But again, that produces a model, not an artwork. The model is what is used to produce an artwork based on a prompt. So what they've created is a tool that is used by individuals. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. All right. John, for, uh, is this the same one? This is the same one. Am I going back I here? Know. Holy shit, you sent two of these? Damn, dude. Dude. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, anyway, said so a uh, serious question. Would you still have zero sympathy for creators slash artists uh, skill once AI is to able to brush? What? To Hang push on, what are you talking about? Jaza out of the market. Love Jaza. I'm not sure what Jaza is. Mm. Thought of He's AI. my brother. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, he has one of the larger art channels on YouTube. Okay, gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. I knew your brother was an artist. I, I didn't know his name was mm -hmm. Jaza. Sorry about that. Thought of AI flooding the medium and pushing him uh, to the bottom of the algorithm where he can't earn a living doing what he loves makes me sad. That's an interesting question. What? I didn't really know yeah, too much I, about like, that, but what do you what do you think? It's not going to push him out. Just like you're not afraid of AI taking your job, the best artist is still going to be doing be on top. And to think that AI is going to replace everyone is a misunderstanding of the technology. And, and I think your misunderstanding of using AI to produce graphic novels, because holy crap, the amount of like the amount of work that it will require to make a good graphic novel with AI is going to require as many people working on it than in the traditional medium. There's no net loss of employment as a result of that. In fact, it's going to be creating a new new industry based on this technology and because it opens up accessibility for basically anyone in the world to make incredible art all right they still will need to learn you know skills to make the best stuff we'll actually get an, an i feel a net benefit out of this technology with more people being able to make incredible things it's still going to require effort and work trust me especially on the graphic novel front well if it's going to take just as much effort why not just do it the traditional way then can I make it the traditional way? Sure, if it takes as much effort. No, no, hire, myself you individually. Right... I, you just I said it was going to take you. a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. one, so... I really like the look of AI art, and two, it'll be interesting how fast it be. It might be faster. It depends. But for both reasons, like one of the reasons I want to do it is actually test the viability of how difficult it is and show people the process. But I also love the look of AI art. I, I legitimately think it looks awesome, and I would love to have a graphic novel that has such high quality. Because one of the things that blows me away with AI art generation is specifically the gradient in coloring. And that's one of the limitations I find with uh, um, interior comic book art, because there's a big difference in quality usually from cover art to interior art on comic books. I would love Can it. Yes. Yeah, I would love it if all interior art was of the quality of cover art, but that yeah. takes a lot more time and effort. With AI tools, I think we can do that. And and I think I'll be able to make, with my own limitation, I'll do my best. But a graphic novel, like, you know, you know, I, I'll just bring up that. We got off topic and I, you know, I don't need to show the entire process anymore. But um, to share that image, that final image that I made, you know. Well, let me just say about the, the interiors versus cover thing. Uh, you can make the interiors just as good as the cover. It just... It's a want. It's a will. It's a want. It's not that you can. You can put the exact same amount. But for into most it. people, it's not financially viable because of how much additional work it would. Why go to the indies? Make your own books. When some the time you need to make it as best as you can make it. Yeah, but even like the coloring, coloring specifically, like because this to me is reflecting a really crisp 
and impressive digital artistic style where the line work is kind of not there, where it's pure color on color with really nice gradients and stuff like that. And uh, I have never seen, and let, like one of the, uh, like I have trouble thinking of any comic book I've ever seen that has consistent interior art to this level of kind of detail and color rate, you know, of, I, I can't think like, oh, maybe there's one or two that's comes close. Um, he's the artist that did, um, uh, I forget his name now, but, he uh, did. He did like one of the Aphrodite um, comic books. I think I might have it on here. With David oh. Finch. Yeah, no, the the one that got, did this. I got this because awesome. the artwork was so incredible. Um, so come and close. And the art is uh, Stephen Sedgwick, I think his name. Is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But like, he's got a painterly dude, style, dude. That is that is just incredible, incredible. So there yeah, are some I mean, examples. It's a, I, a pain, yeah, painterly style yeah. of art. Right, with not I you don't see a wave. You of don't see a lot of graphic novels like that with interior art like that, do we? Uh, and um, no. and I like I would love to. That's one of the things that I want to try out to see if I could produce a graphic novel with air art that has like art, interior art like the equivalent of what we're seeing right there. Okay, here's that the difference be awesome. though between that. So that is this very nice, um, whatever he does, their digitally painted style that he does but there is still dynamics because he is actually drawing it. So the thing I, I would worry about and push back on the graphic novel when you're, let's just say this is, this is the um, quality of what you're going to produce in the graphic novel, just for shits and giggles. Mm -hmm. um, the dynamics, they're going to be different between what that dude does and what the AI does is going to be night and different. Cause the guy knows how to draw. He knows how to pose. He knows how to sequentially tell a story through each and every panel through all of the, the entire book there's dynamics there yeah i agree AI, that's why that's why we would need a person to do that like, like part of making right, so why not just have the person do it then? because few people can make art to that level right there but there's a lot of talented comic book artists that know how to pace how to make the panels because trust me like, like something that blew me away with you know working with mike s miller on the uh, shadow of the chronographic novel is his st visual storytelling ability in understanding how to put the panels where they are to convey a story mm -hmm. visually blew me away absolutely yeah, amazing sto that's, that's storytelling yeah, in comics exactly exactly i like ai can't duplicate that that's one of its massive limitations so to make a graphic novel of the high, best quality possible as i've been saying oh, this has been my message from the very beginning it requires additional artistic ability and other mediums that you need to combine with it it's a tool through a process the ai will never be able to do that on itself by itself to do it i will need a human artist to mm. draw out every panel every scene every uh, pose and background uh as a base in the same way that my initial image my initial drawing for this image was the foundation to this pose You'll need that for every single panel. If you're if you're gonna want to make something of true quality, like genuinely good, that is conveying specific, you know, story in each panel, because it, like storytelling visually, every panel moves from one to the other. So you're gonna have very specific pose that needs to be in those pose so the story makes sense. And to achieve that, you need to do that manually. The AI just is incapable of doing that and will be incapable of doing that for a very long time. This is why I've been saying artists, you don't need to be afraid of AI replacing you because to make the best stuff, you're needed. In actual fact, you artists are the people who will be able to make the very best AI art flat, you know, but hands down. I, I would venture to say most real artists don't want to make AI art because again, again, I'll say, I'll go back to the earlier topic. I'm an artist. I have an ego. I want you to look at my art and I want to say I did that from start to finish. That's all me. That's what my you consider ego a real through. artist. A real artist, someone that does something by hand from beginning so, to uh, end. Oh, from beginning to end. From beginning to end by uh, hand. See, see to me, I don't think nearly as many people are as precious about that as you're describing. And really? also, yeah, yeah. But also when we're seeing a different definition of artists here. OK, because I know I can think of heaps of artists, right, that identify as artists and everything like that, that love AI and they're using it and they share the process and stuff like that. And they use it as a thing and they don't have such a restrictive vision or view of what a real artist is. Um, 
and again, because when you say real artist, that excludes photography. But I think for photography, <laughs> no, no, no. real let's, artist. let's keep it to the comics. Let's let's not jump. Right, sorry, a real medium. comic book artist. Well, yeah, I'm not trying to claim. Artist. Okay, well, real you need to be artist. very specific when you say artists when you say you do not see any real comic book artists okay that's the difference and well, i don't have to be that specific because i already said at the beginning beginning of our no, show because, that we're talking because i don't use that definition so when, when you're talking about when i if i were to say a real artist would be willing to use ai art yeah i absolutely believe that and so i don't accept your definition of a real artist is and i don't follow it um and so would a real artist want to use ai tools i think absolutely even even real artists right and I, I, I know several, but because AI is so polarizing and people get attacked for merely mentioning that they use it in small ways, I won't mention their names, right? But I know professional level, phenomenal artists, right, mm. who are really interested in using AI tools in their process. Absolutely. Whoever those are, I mean, I would push back on them as well. I don't, I don't really care. It's just... This is, this is my this is my opinion when it when you talk about the art form when you talk about the art form of drawing line for line everything that you were creating how can you take pride in something that you don't do 100 percent and any and when i say real artist real comic book artist somebody that takes pride in their work that has that ego to want people to appreciate what it is that they did is not going to step aside and be like you know what I can have something else that's not me finish this off and take the same amount of pride in it. I just, I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't understand it. Let me jump into a couple of these super chats real quick as we're falling behind. You guys have been crazy with the super chats. I appreciate y'all. Uh, GJJ, $10. Thank you. I appreciate it. It says drum machines and uh, sanitizers will destroy, or sensitizers will destroy music, AKA 1975. Uh, drum machines have destroyed music. No music is still around. I like no, no, the I'm whole like, no, the, yeah, it's this, truth. again the whole jumping fear, into a different uh, medium, but, but yeah, you're right. There's there's there, a lot of stuff going that. Yeah. But no, they're equivalent. Like AI art is not gonna destroy handmade art. No, we'll still no draw. absolutely. Yeah, not. good, good. I, I'm glad we can agree on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We got uh Clayton. What's going on, brother? How draw comics.net for five dollars Australian. I like that. Question for Shad: what does it take to become a master AI prompter? What are the hallmark good prompting? How do you develop that skill? It's tricky because it's different between each model. Each model uh, has been trained to, uh, I guess, accept different um, word inputs. And so when, it, when you change to a new model, it's actually another learning curve. You've got to figure out, okay, how does this model respond to prompts? Is, does it understand more sentence construction, uh, construction or specific things? And then once you actually figure out how the um, model specifically, and this is going to be different between just also different AI image generators. So you have stable diffusion, you have mid journey and things like that. And there are m more recent ones. I think, was it Bing had a recent one that is a really easy prompting um, uh, AI generator. And so it doesn't take too much, I guess, too much of a learning curve to get what looks to be good results, but to get specific results, that's really hard. And so once you learn how the model um, uh, responds to prompts, then it's all a matter of tweaking and waiting and or, and prompt order and all these things. And uh, I don't consider myself a master prompter. I just, I can do it well enough to get the results I'm after. Um, there are people who are much better <laughs> at prompting than me, who understands the specific inputs and can get much better specific results with a good prompt more than So I would can. you consider yourself a prompter then and not an artist? I consider it as a type of art in and of itself. Mm. Uh, Clayton, for another $5, thank you, brother, said, uh, why is it so hard for AI artists to own what they do and admit that it's way faster and easier to create than regular art? It's making art on a God mode. Hang on. When did I say it wasn't a faster or easier? Never said that. I've said it requires effort and skill. It still does. And to make the best stuff it does require, I've never said it requires as much or more than handmade stuff. No, I've been very clear that one of the appeals of AI art is that it is faster. And that's one of the significant things about it. It, it. Like, And artists can use that in their workflow to increase their output in tremendous ways, absolutely phenomenal ways. And even with them be doing most of the work, like I, I already mentioned, what, there's a guy, I forget his name, which is annoying, where he shows like, you know, he's digitally painting, but there is a, a, an AI that is rendering that as he paints, like one for one as he does it. And it's amazing. And so that tool and the application of AI is a means for digital artists to speed up 
their workflow crazy to a crazy level. So yeah, speed is an absolute massive benefit of this technology. Hmm. Uh, John for $10 said, Chad, call yourself an editor or director. I think people might be okay with that. Same work, uh, would same would work for four people, uh, using chat GP in 15 years. Once it's mastered, they should call themselves editors or directors. Well, we kind of discussed that. I actually think directors are artists. And so when people like, this is the kind of frustrating thing. Whenever I say AI artists, are artists, they think I'm trying to say they're equivalent to comic book artists or hand-drawn artists. And I've been very clear about that. Distinction. I'm not actually saying that because artists is a very broad term and there are multiple types of art. And this is just a new medium of art. And so, yeah, they're artists. They're not equivalent to hand-drawn artists, but it's a different medium. They are AI artists with, you know, a different medium entirely, a different tool set. And just like a director is an artist, AI art requires more direction, more hand-drawn manual input than an actual film director um, that people don't seem to want to acknowledge. Kayla for four ninety nine. Uh, this feeds my ego, so I appreciate it. Uh, so Joe is a real comic book artist who works extremely hard and produces quality stuff by hand, constantly improving due to the time and effort he invests. I think that was one of the things I was going back earlier and talking about with uh, improving. You know, like how does somebody actually improve physically drawn art when you're focusing so much time on on AI? If you lost the ability to use the AI, would you be the same kind of quality artist in a quote unquote real life? I guess. Yeah, you know, we already kind of touched on that, but just reiterating it. Uh, Ryan says, why does Ezra Miller have a, a buster sword? <laughs> it's actually not a buster sword. It's called a Titan sword and it can actually extend and uh, expand to a, like this giant version of it. Uh, I designed it in 3d. I think it's really cool. And so I can't wait to, you know, uh, depict it, but these side bits here, they extend off and then it, it expands. So, yeah. I wasn't going for Ezra Miller though. I don't know. <laughs> uh paul five dollars said how are you going to become a talented writer even or when every half-baked idea you had as a kid you just generate and move on i think that was from earlier when we were talking about the writing yeah if you actually want a quality result you need to learn how to write to be able to tell what that's being generated is good or not we're a long way off by the way um uh, these uh, chat models spitting out entire novels um they have a limit on understanding context and i think we're reaching like a hundred thousand words but that's only on like really advanced models and stuff um and so it'll i think it'll get get there the technology is getting to a point but then you need to know how to write to actually see the errors and what's good and what's bad and what the ai spits out uh we got 143 people in the chat i'm gonna put a poll i'm just gonna put ai yes or no <laughs> I'm, I'm interested <laughs> in the demographic I, we have here i'm not sure it's gonna be a representative sample size there, let's you know, just but... let's just see and, and plus i like polls you know okay so ai yes or no i'm gonna see how i just want to see i don't want to see uh jbot art where'd that go there we go. Jbot art for five dollars. Appreciate it, brother. Said, I don't buy it. You use AI art to make art above your skill level, and then say, "Look what I made." Are you ashamed of your natural art ability? You think no, about I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm personally, I'm proud of my own natural ability. I am a hand drawn artist, and I've drawn heaps throughout my entire life, and I still enjoy doing it. And the fact that I can actually use it with AI tools to get even better results that thrills me. That doesn't mean I'm not progressing as a hand-drawn artist still. I'm still drawing. Um, but it's a new medium, and I love using it. All right, then. Corey Barton for $2 said, uh, Google AI art copyright laws. It ain't your art. Oh, you what need do you to do more than that? just a Google. I've done a whole video. If you go to Shad AI, I have done a video explaining in very specific ways how you can actually have full copyright over your ai art images and it's already moving that way in the courts by the way um and it's only getting stronger but one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is uh derivative works under intellectual property hypothetically and this isn't going to be the case but mm. hypothetically ai images can't be copyrighted that's not going to be the case but even if they were right if you own an intellectual property every you have the sole right to produce and distribute derivative images of that intellectual property. And so the example here is my character, Dalen, from my novel, Shadow of the Conqueror. 
a derivative image of him is very clear. He has a very specific design and everything. And even if the AI image can't be copyrighted, I can only uh, distribute that. I'm the only one who has the right to distribute that derivative work and sell it. And so if anyone tried to t steal that AI image of my, uh, my copyright protected character, they would breach my intellectual copyright IP by distributing it or trying to sell it. And so under um, uh, intellectual property IP, you can actually have full copyright protection over AI works. When I say full, under the intellectual property, because that's the thing that's protecting it. But that is only if. Uh, already, um, AI images are being acknowledged having copyright with significant human input. I've shown significant human input with a lot of my images. Um, the US Copyright Office does not grant copyright. They register it. And that's what enables it to be able to go to court. But copyright is actually inherently given on any artwork's creation. And it's currently going through the courts to legitimize it and, and make that more solid. It's just because the US Copyright Office denied registration doesn't mean they don't have copyright. And by the way, other countries do not uh, are not under the jurisdiction of the US Copyright Office. In Australia, we don't have that. Every, every artwork that is created automatically has in automatic copyright by the creator. And I could um, I could take someone in the US to court to protect my intellectual property and also my you know uh, copyright protected images in the US even when it's not registered in the US. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of misunderstandings about um, AI art and copyright. I have, a, I have a dedicated video going deeper into this. And already like if, and here's like the big thing. If you think AI works can't be copyrighted, Go ahead and plagiarize Marvel's Secret Invasion intro, the, you know, the TV series Secret Invasion that was made mm -hmm. with AI tools. Plagiarize that yeah, and like see that. how far you get. I have a feeling yeah. that Disney is going to uh, impose their copyright protection on that. And so there's a lot of false assumptions about AI art images and copyright. Roy brings up an interesting point here. So everyone starts slapping heavy watermarks on your art. There have been examples of AI art that have come through that have a watermark on it because they pulled from something that was not pulled. Remember how AI an AI image learns what a cat looks like by looking at heaps of images of cats? So it it's just not put because the watermark it, on there because it thinks a watermark looking thing is in. By the way, that's both mostly being removed from nearly every AI model at the moment. Mm. Um, that was just a, a, an anomaly and an error in the learning process and the training of these models. That are, that's old news now. Um, but yeah, that wasn't it actually copying from a direct image. It's just that there were enough images that had watermarks that it confused the AI to think that its images are supposed to have watermarks or signatures. And these signatures and watermarks, they're never one-to-one -one duplications. It actually, I have it, I, when I started using it, when I had models had these errors in it, it was creating random signatures, signatures that never existed before because it thought artwork is supposed to have signatures just like this is what it's supposed to look like this is what a cat is supposed to look like it's not lifting it from a specific individual image at all it's just got confused because it thinks that's what it's supposed to look like so doesn't that kind of go back to what we were talking about earlier with the images that it's been being fed so you're being fed images created by human beings and it's taking those images which could to also take signatures watermarks all of that and what is being produced is coming from actually produced human art even if it's broke into a billion different pieces and regenerated oh, that's not mass. how it works at all now it's not broken into a billion different pieces these images are not retained in the models after the training process remember mm. it learns what a cat looks like and is able to reproduce and create a new image of a cat from a, a diffusion pattern it's not a collage. It's not drawing from an individual image unless it was overtrained or there was a mistake in the process, right? You could type in the Mona Lisa into image generators and get a warped mutated version of it because there was enough instances of the Mona Lisa in the training set. But it will never produce that randomly based on a complex prompt. You need to actually tell it to make this specific thing for it to make even a remotely similar facsimile of a training image that was in the image um, training sets enough times like the Mona Lisa. But it'll never spit out the mo uh, something like a, if you tried to describe the Mona Lisa word for word without saying Mona Lisa and try and get the AI image generator to reproduce a one to one image of the Mona Lisa, it's impossible because it creates images anew from from literal noise from a diffusion pattern. And so the idea that it's broken into a billion pieces is false. That's not how the technology works at all. And the only reason why it had watermarks and signatures in it is because 
it was it was actually believed that's what's supposed to be in the, in the image and so it created a brand new watermark and a brand new signature when it created the image from static noise from scratch the metal pig i like that name that's cool it says a cat is a poor example because a, a cat exists what about fantasy etc how does ai learn how to make a dragon it looks at other people's art of dragons yeah of course it does, I'm, but it creates a new image of a dragon. It doesn't take a one for one copy and plagiarize it. So when you when you take the the skins, you know, on your video, the Supergirl video, which again, you guys get to check a chance, go watch it, uh, and you actually see the process of how he does it. You have a sampler, right? That you bring up. Explain that because there's already like generated skins. It's like in that particular sampler. picture. I, I can't remember the well, I'm hoping you kind of dive more into it and explain it. You you go to like you have like a sample, like there's these animated drawings, these masks, these you know, different things. And that was the style that it posed and made that supergirl. Because that supergirl originally came out with like kind of an animated face before you changed yes, everything yeah. up. Okay. You're what, talking about so explain model. that. Yeah, yeah. Where does that where did those come from? The model those... or check yeah, the model or checkpoint are uh, image generating models that are trained in different things to duplicate, imitate style. And so the first one that I was using is called Rev Animated, and it's made to duplicate a more animated style. And it's actually really powerful in terms of finer details and things, but it also had problems. You saw, like, if you saw that, you know, uh, initial video, there were artifacts, random light things spewing out, the multiple mm -hmm. kind of um, uh, capes flowing in wonder uh, it had issues and it can't do a realistic looking style either but i use it i use that rev animated to generate a possible composition and then i found one that worked and then i edited in photoshop to make the composition i wanted and then put that back in and editing processing difference and i eventually changed to another model which is called realistic vision which does really good realistic stuff was it really now i can't remember but anyway that's so one who, I usually who created use. those images, I guess, is what I'm asking. Oh, well, that they, those aren't images. No, no. Uh, so th these models are trained in the similar ways that the large models are trained, but just a bit more specific. And so they're trained off of thousands to millions of image references. I mean, these are the training images. Okay. And so it's an AI thing as well, then. Yeah, yeah it's that's, an AI that's thing. what I'm asking. But okay. the, what people falsely uh, they, they incorrectly assume about this is that they think images are retained in the model. No, no, no. They, they train. So th this more specific model is trained off of a more specific set of images, but it's not copying and storing them. It's learning. This is what you want me to make images like you. It's learning style. It's actually mm. learning what these things look like. Yeah. Uh, guys, I apologize if I didn't get every super chat. I tried as best as I can. You guys were definitely flooding them in there. So I do apologize if I missed one. Uh, but I do appreciate all the super chats tonight. The chat has been absolutely fantastic tonight. You guys are going back and forth. Good discussion in there. Uh, some funny stuff. I see a lot of funny stuff posted in there as well. Uh, Chad, I do appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, Mate, I've loved it, like genuinely, uh, because we disagree fun on some strong fundamentals. But this is the type of discussion I actually really love and appreciate. And look, I'm sorry for interrupting. I just, you don't have a tendency no, when good. something is, is mentioned. I, I want to address it. Uh, but you've been really good about it as well. And uh, and uh, it's been respectful and that this has been great. And, and this is the thing, like, I get upset when people take this discussion so personally and they, and they look too much into it. And then they create, like, a narrative in their mind that I'm trying to say I'm better than hand-drawn artists or that, you know, all, all this other nonsense that I've never said. And they, and they try and take it to a personal place and they get personally offended. And it shouldn't be that. Like, we have a disagreement about an emerging technology. That's about as far as it goes. Like, I'm not offended by any means by the fact that you think it's soulless or, or that you don't, that you think it's lazy and stuff. We simply disagree. And that's the end of it. I, I don't see the issue with disagreeing about it, but a lot of people take it very personally, unfortunately. Let me ask you one last question because I was going to say this earlier and I completely forgot when we went on to different topics. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that you've been so combative in an in attitude wise coming right out with your posts where it's almost like you're baiting, baiting artists with the way that you phrase posts and say, you know, even, even if you go into your videos, you, you come off kind of a, uh, no offense, you kind of come off in this like kind of pompous way, right? Like where you're almost uh, like you're like giving it back to the artists that are afraid of, really? of the AR stuff. I think AI. that's 
I look, I it's not intentional if it's there. Uh, I personally don't think it is there. I don't, I'm not going in to be combative. I'm, I'm disagreeing strongly and I'm saying, this is what it is. This is incorrect. This is correct. And I don't apologize for that. But if people thinking I'm being particularly combative in that, I would say, have you seen my content before? This is the exact way that I have conducted myself throughout the beginning of my career. It's not, I'm not, I'm not behaving any differently when I'm addressing things that I feel being misconception. By the way, if you want to see me, what I'm like, what I'm purposefully trying to trigger people, have a look at uh, some of my nunchuck videos where that's when I'm trolling and you'll see a distinct difference in my tone and tenor with the um, nunchucks versus the AI art thing. You do have a lot of uh, interesting videos on your one site with all the weapons and stuff. I, I have oh, to say, you. I have to say, um, all right, guys, I know we probably didn't cover everything you wanted to see. This was not a conversation where we were trying to change minds or attack anybody. I le legitimately wanted to have a better understanding of what Shad was talking about, express some of the stuff that I have. Uh, and that's not going to change. You know, I still feel the same way I feel about AI art. Shad's going to feel the same way he does. You know, Hopefully you guys got some entertainment out of it, have your own opinions, and we'll go about our way. I would just say that... <laughs> We're definitely not afraid of AI art. My biggest issue is when people create art, AI art, to actually create comic books, because I respect the the process of hand drawn comic books so much, like with an absolute passion. It's what I do. It's what I want to do for a living. It's what I've trained myself for twenty years to do. So I have a, a very solid thought process on on AI not getting into comic books, and when it does, I'm going to push back on it. Uh, people that are just doing it for art form, having fun around, you know, fucking around with it or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't really care. It's just uh, question, purely can I, in the comic book form. Yes, sir. Can I ask, because I fully intend to use AI tools with future graphic novel development and stuff. Yes. Does your perspective change by the fact that I'm going to be using an artist to do the fundamental layouts and compositions, poses and backgrounds? No. Why not? Because that still, is, to me, that is the craft of comic book that is not only infused in it that's that's the foundation of this work because it's it still generated exist. it's still generated by something that's that's not human that's that's, it, that's the biggest thing it, it might be it, it might be better in storytelling wise because you're having somebody lay out stuff but it's still being finished by a program and it's just it's not something that i support okay the poll by the way guys i'm gonna end the poll it's uh an outstanding 71% to 29% no on the AI. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. We might have a biased chat, but we'll still Maybe. go with it. <laughs> we'll still go with it. <laughs> well, I said, I, I don't think that's a representative sample size. Um, and look, I think maybe uh, maybe you'll get whittled down by time because it's just going to be more accepted as an industry standard, this technology. Um, and especially like if, if AI art is going to enable me to make better quality products more often as an independent creator to try and push back against the mainstream, that's an empowering thing. That's using a, an emerging technology to really, you know, push back against a lot of the crap that is being made in the world. And, and it's going to empower even more people to do it. And it's going to produce some phenomenal quality stuff in the future. Like, like the graphic novel, I'm, I'm going to be working with human artists and I'm going to be like all-star all Star. So this is what I plan to do with All Star. This isn't going to be a full graphic novel one. What I hope to do, uh, it's going to be a, I'm going to find an artist to do. Basically, it's going to be produced in the exact same way uh, for a final result like Shadow the Conqueror, all the traditional way. But I want to make, in addition to that, an AI enhanced uh, version of it that be so being sold at the same time, where you have the traditional handmade art, where it took the artist to draw traditional colorist or digital colorist and everything like that and then as a companion optional additional purchase mm. there will be a version that has that art enhanced with ai to look in really an impressive different style as a companion piece very interesting very interesting well i will stay on my side because you would you have the choice yours you, but, but i'm just kidding would you couldn't you just then purchase the uh the hand-drawn one and ignore the AI version of it. Why would having an sure. AI version of that? I don't see why you, you would need an AI version if you had a hand-drawn version. Well, some people like it. I would like it, but 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 would how would that? Yeah, Phil. Would that stop you wanting to support a project? 
even though it has a fully traditional hand drawn version as its foundation. There's some ethical stuff with AI that has to be worked out when it comes to what I consider possible, even though you push back on it and I get it. I, I, I appreciate your opinions on that, but my thing is still kind of, I feel there is ethical aspects to the could be theft of art when it comes to generating art. Just my own personal opinion. Mm -hmm. That would have to be worked through for a long time from now. And I just don't believe it is that. And I would just uh, rather can support, I jump on that. I'd rather support some of the hand draws work than created well, by a computer. To, to address that's already been addressed. Like uh, there, the AI generator that Adobe released is only trained off of public domain and licensed images. And so if the companion AI piece was only made with what they call, I think, you know, um, using copyrighted works and fair use capacities for training in AI is completely fair use and ethical. That's fine. But they call this an ethical model. If the variant AI version was with an ethical model like Adobe Firefly, would you still have an issue? Let's say that again. I lost you. <laughs> so Adobe Firefly, the AI image generator they made, is only trained off of public domain and images they own the license to, okay, to address any uh, potential objection people have with the, ethic the, e the ethics of training off of copyrighted works, okay? Even though I disagree with it being unethical, for a safety net, there are models that are completely open source and licensed works, okay? And so if uh, the AI version of the graphic novel was only done with like Adobe Firefly or the so-called AI things, you don't have to buy it. Would you still purchase the handmade version of it that was done by human artists? Like, like would having an AI version of it sour you on the project still? I think it would just because I'm against I'm against AI personally. So if even if though AI's, if AI even though no human artist was affected. In fact, it employed more people in the project's creation. The fundamental base graphic novel is a full expression of, of same human project, artistic. Right? Same project, though, yeah. Yeah, it's but part of the same the, project. The, the, fundamental, no. the, fun, the, the first fundamental graphic novel is made the way that you love. Human expression, human made, and it only has an AI variant as an optional purchase in addition to it. I do not understand why you have, anyone would have an uh, ethical or moral objection to that. Is it's supporting something that I don't agree with, and that's just my own personal opinion. Because I, what, I well, what you, I feel about AI, which I've been pretty, I think I've been pretty, uh, pretty open about how I feel about AI. I've made it a statement before in the past, like I'm, I'm not supporting anything created by AI or that has AI in it, and it's my own personal uh, uh, stance. The, on it. the the first graphic novel wasn't made with AI, and all the, saying that the objections project that overall you... has an AI. As an AI overall, version, it's but, AI version in it. But yeah, so, I mean, all it's, the it's reasons, the but all the reasons that you've described why you have an objection with AI art doesn't exist in that first graphic novel. And so, I don't see the issue. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an issue we can we can disagree on. You don't you don't see it, and that's fine. It's just, well, no, 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 my, because I'm trying stance. to see. It's, it's I'm trying AI. to see the see... logical justification, and every logical justification that you explained is answered by the fact that the first graphic novel is human made. There's no AI, you know, part in its creation, and I re and based on the logical reasoning you've presented, there is no justification then to not support that first graphic novel just because it has an AI variant optional purchase separate to it. This is where I stand. I don't want to explain it more than just how I feel. I, I, I would call you out on that because I think you... You can call me out I, on I, it if you Because I, I, I think it's an inconsistency that you can't justify based on the logic you've presented for your position. You're making the assumption, though, that the hand-drawn version is even something I would want to purchase in the first yes, place. Yes, yes, but pretend it is. It's a great, like, it's got a great story. Uh, like, it would be something you would absolutely purchase if it was standing on its own. But now suddenly it has an AI variant in addition to it. Why would that change your desire to buy it? It would change my it's desire a, to buy because I am against the but, but creation the reasons, of AI within comic book 
art. And but I explained reason, that earlier. Yeah. I explained yeah, that earlier. Yeah, but that's addressed. I, I've, 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 like all the reasons you gave. Yeah, but why answered, would I? Why I, would I? Why would I buy one and and not the other? But why would I be interested in it in general? Like it, it doesn't make sense. The question that you're asking me. Pretending if that I was, if, graphic let's just say, art. let's say the the book that you're talking about is is phenomenal, and I look at it and I'm like, wow, that's really good. The art's awesome. The characters look cool. The story sounds good. And then I see that it's also attached with the very thing that I've sat here for the last two hours and thirty four minutes, saying that I don't respect and i think it disrespects the the um medium that is comics is attached to that very same project that i'm going to be like i'm not going to support it because then i would be going against my own word my own stance of supporting something only for that reason so the entire project in my mind would be like it's a no-go really? sorry because yep. the reasons you explained why you're against ai art none of those objections exist in the example i'm giving All your objections sure about gave, no, no, sure all, like all I your gave. objections, no, all your objections of why you're against AI art, the human component, the expression, the way the fact that it's that made. There's an AI art attached to it, uh, but all so your objections in, indirectly, I would be supporting that AI book by buying the first book because it's the same project. So I'm still indirectly supporting that AI book, the very same thing that I'm saying that I would but not you, support. Not necessarily. That's, you're supporting the works. you're supporting the traditional creation of graphic novels in the way that they've always been made because that's how this was made. I don't think you're understanding my point, or you're purposely not understanding my point. No, no, because I this. think it addresses yeah. all your objections. And to it me, it my... feels uh, at the, to this point. When we get to this point, it feels right, get, like get an unjust uh, like uh, to the, where we've gotten now. It feels like you have an unjustified bias against AI because AI bad. And there's no, no real I reason. I explain why I don't like AI. But not in this example. I explained it multiple times. Not in this example. It has an ethical model. It was made it's with human same. arts, it, it human intent. It, it, the the initial product is like exactly the initial product has everything that you love about graphic novels and comic books. That doesn't change by the fact it has an AI variant. Not at all. And so you're not justifying your your dislike here or objection to AI being used in this application. There hasn't been a single valid justification because it addresses all your issues. It indirectly supports it. John for $10 says, if a program creates more than 20% of the image, you are not the artist. Photoshop chain brush example. If Photoshop created the entire spawn image, then you are not the artist. I do agree. Then photography is not the artist of... Uh, Different medium doesn't count. You know, that does like this. Is a direct <laughs> nothing to do with, with comic book. I know we keep trying to. Well, guess what? Well, if you want to talk like if you want to separate photos, it, AI photographs. art has nothing to do with comic book art because it's a different medium under that same standard. AI art does have to do with comic book art if it's being used for comic book art in the you sequential storytelling of comic book art. You can make sequential stories with photography. I wouldn't consider that comic book, though. Really? You I could would. do it. I don't know. Like, definitionally, definitionally, it would be. <laughs> Uh, this has been fun, Chad. I enjoy this. Um, Don for two said, Joe, rock on, Chad. You're just wrong. John said, Heard to hear, folks. Chad runs his morality based on Chinese copyright ethics. Nice. Right, so really? You guys, are, you explain guys explain are, that. All right. Well, I don't, I don't think he can explain it. I don't think he can. That's why uh, I don't think it's wrong. Well, super chats are not going to explain it. I think, uh, Chad is sounding like a Mormon missionary. I don't know what that, that is. That makes sense. That there's a reason. Are, are you a Mormon possible? missionary? I was, and I'm still no. a Mormon, happily so, yeah. Member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm proud of it. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. If you want to back hand-drawn art, uh, go check out Reaper Destroyer, which is my book on Indiegogo now. It is almost done. We are hoping to have a pretty fun announcement after the holidays to let you know how this is going, and hopefully we can get this out to you guys soon. Got some amazing artists on here like Dale Keown doing the cover. One of the living legends in this industry jumping on and doing a cover for this book. I'm absolutely excited about. I got to work with some amazing uh, creative guys in the industry as well. Uh, Matt Bat Banning, Joe Weems from Top Cow back in the day. Fantastic inkers. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into this because I'm really tired. It's after 2.30 here. And I didn't realize that. I need to get up early and go to Thanksgiving. But check this out. Back it if you like. Links are down below. I appreciate everybody jumping in, joining the chat joining the conversation, having a good old time. Chad, again, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you coming on, jumping into, if you My want pleasure. to call it the lion's den, but just having an open, honest conversation with us, as honest mm -hmm. as it could be, I guess. But I do appreciate you. I respect you for jumping on. Thanks, uh, Jerry. And this is the thing, right? 
I got. I, we disagree about AI art. That's to me such a small thing. I, I'm pretty sure we agree and support so many things about graphic novels, comic books, and just many things. And so I find people just blow this thing out of proportion. And to me, it's actually a small thing in regards to opinions in the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's disagreements and that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's what we, yeah. that's what we do with here. All right, everybody have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Uh, hang out with friends, hang out with family, be thankful for a lot of things in life. Uh, take care of one another, be good to each other. Chad, is there anything that you would like to plug? You're, you are my guest on the show. Is there anything you would like to plug before we get out of here? I'm trying to think I've got a new, uh, YouTube channel called Shad AI. <laughs> Where you can see some of my, uh, you know, discussions about AI stuff. Uh, if that's not your thing, I make um, pop culture criticism and review stuff on a channel called Night's Watch. Uh, I also have Shadowversity, all about swords. You can find me on many different places. I do believe I have some links below. So if you guys are interested in that, check it out. Until then, be good to each other. Take care of one another. And as always, picture me naked. Talk to you all later. <laughs>